Hello once again, welcome to the PokerStars Arena and welcome to WCOOP 2022 as we continue our live cards up coverage of the 10K World Championship of No Limit Hold'em. This is day three of a four day event, the bubble has burst, 39 players remain, today they play down to a final table of nine. That first prize of nearly $1.3 million, almost in reach, along with the championship trophy. Hello, I'm James Hartigan, alongside me, Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. Uh, Joe, reference day two, playing through the bubble, the bust-out bonanza, getting down to the final five tables. It took a while. Yeah, it was kind of a long day yesterday. I think close to eight hours, uh, so it should be a shorter one today. Just kidding, it's probably going to be another long one. Yeah, it's going to take a while to get down from five tables to one table. Let's get to our first feature table. Plenty of big names still in this tournament. So yesterday, we lost Spraggy, We lost Sam Grafton. But we've got Adrian Mateos at this table. We've got Graf Tackle, Jens Arenz at this table. In fact, where's Mateos gone? He's already been balanced off. We've already lost a player. We did. Yeah, sure looks did. like we lost Amino last who was the I mean, first uh, to go on day three. So Mateos has been balanced off, but we've still got Pabritz, we've still got Dingebrinker, and we've still got that player whose online handle we really struggled with yesterday, Hingerimhus, that one. Hingery Dingery, I think, is what we settled on eventually, James. Well... Queens make the straight, and Dinge Brinker wins the pot. Once again, we are joined in the PokerStars Arena by Nick Walsh to analyze the action. Good evening, Nick. Good evening, boys. How's it doing? Thank you for having me. And it's exciting times as we get to the business end of this high buy-in main event, Nick. And... I want to try and showcase as many of the top name pros as possible who are still in contention. Players like Kelvin Kerber, Chris Mormon, Jareth East. That's right. The Goblin King still going strong. Yep. So many big names to follow in this WCOOP. And we're getting down right into it now, guys. We're already under 40 players now. As we see the King Jack coming in for a check raise on the Jack High Texture, we do very frequently seeing these top pairs with good kickers being played as check raises. You do want to have some top pair check raises. You don't always want to be flatting with your top pairs, and it would make sense to include the better kickers in there where you can actually um, kind of cold deck some others that might have some weaker kickers as well with the top pair. But uh, you're absolutely right, James. What a star-studded final 40 we have here so many people to follow love to see chris mormon do well big fan of chris mormon yeah a lot of time with that guy I, uh, I know ever since covered back w the Coop sorry main events before sorry nick uh, uh have we covered them from the nearly the beginning before y yes we did it in 2020 and in 2021 thank you for your question so i don't <laughs> remember all right, I'm going somewhere with this. I could just say nothing if you want. I'm going somewhere with this. <laughs> okay. I don't remember it being this stacked this late in the game. I remember there being a few people, I, but I don't remember it being, like, of the 38 remaining players that, like, 14 or 15 of them are people that we know very I, well. 
I, I think that's a valid point, Joe, and I would reference the fact that previously the WCOOP main event has been a 5K, which obviously is still a high buy-in, don't get me wrong, right. but you double that to 10K, you are thinning the field somewhat as far as eligibility is concerned. And yes, uh, not to say there haven't been talented players making deep runs, but I would agree the proliferation of familiar names from both the live and online world is definitely on point this year. Uh, just to highlight a couple of other players, by the way, KZHH, who is a former Scoop main event winner. That, of course, has always been a 10K. And Tankanza, that is Gianluca Speranza, who won the Scoop main event two years in a row. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we've got all those dynamics that you mentioned, James. And, of course, we have the fact that this is WQ Take 2 with the additional added money um, in the prize pool, which added an additional bunch of players who wanted to play both as qualifiers and also as, you know, putting additional bullets in for the additional value. So even more reason to find ourselves so stacked this late as well as we see Ace-King all in here called by the Ace-Queen. And Ace-King Ace makes top pair. Looking very good and drawing dead on the turn is old Pappy. So Hinja is going to get the double up. This is a player who satellited in for $215, as we discovered yesterday, and is already guaranteed their best ever online result. Yeah, by like 10 times. Yeah, so what are we paying now? 37 k And previously, they cashed for 2.1 k It's almost 20 times. Well, look at this. Pablo Brito getting aggressive with Ace-4 suited after Yannick Poker 1 opened on the button with Ace-Jack. Yes, an unfortunate position dynamic here. And Ace-Jack with the advantage of position, with the advantage of having the best hand. Pabritz does have the betting lead. So Yannick, third in chips right now, facing a bet of 360,000. It is Luis Faria who has come into the penultimate day as chip leader with 17 million right now. Yeah, I think this is probably always a mandatory continue. Spiking that queen right on the turn, wow. making the nut straight. That's a huge, huge turn for Yannick here. I'm not sure how much more Pabritz puts in here, though. I feel like this might be the kind of texture where he'll just bet small and then slow down. But he does pick up the combo draw on the turn, guys. Does pick up the clubs with the gut shot as well. So that might incentivize him to find the second bullet. He does fire again, 840k into 2 million. And do you put in a raise here any of the time, Nick, just to, uh, nope, doesn't look like in this particular time. You know what? I, I honestly don't know, Joe. And I think the dynamic against a player like Pabritz is so different from, you know, your average sort of player who's going to be three-betting out of the small sure. blind. I think that changes things so drastically because he will have more bluffs than the average guy, I suppose, and probably more. I'm assuming this is call every time he does make the call. Yeah. And Pab Ritz is eliminated just like wow. that as the blinds go up to 45K, 90K. Wow, so that was a very quick exit. Very first hand of the day, we lost a player in 39th place, and within the first 10 minutes, we have lost Pablo Brito for Brits gone, which means that Adra Mateos is now back at the feature table. Welcome, Amadi. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome straight back. Yeah, Joe, it's a, it's a great question, honestly. I, I guess the, the, the answer is you let him bluff because he will have more bluffs than the average player, but, right. you know, also I, also if, if you're if you're going to turn this straight there with Ace-Jack, I think you know you're going broke to the, to the boats at that point anyway, right? The SPR is so low. Um, I think you're kind of just like, okay, if he's got a, if he's got a boat, I'm just going to pay him. Obviously, the double paired board isn't going to happen all that often, where you're going to be concerned about like one card making the boat, for example. But uh, yeah, very unlucky there. Uh, if, I think if he doesn't pick up the clubs, he might just shut down on the turn. I'm not sure, but uh, he felt committed, and that's GG for our good friend Pabritz. Francisco, watching on YouTube, asks, "Today is the last day? No, today is the penultimate day. We're going to play down to the final table tonight, which." I know if you watch like the Sunday Million, you think, oh, 37 players remaining, they'll be done in like four hours. It's going to take five to six hours to get down to nine, and then we'll pause again, we'll come back tomorrow, and you can watch the final table live tomorrow evening, 6 p.m. GMT, 7 p.m. Central European time, and we will crown a champion and award that first prize of nearly $1.3 million. Yeah, quite right, James. We do obviously have 
these luxury blind levels, which are a lot slower than the Sunday Mill. Obviously, people also not playing for bounties as well, which does sort of incentivize action when we're doing our new PKO format for the Sunday Millies. As we see Ace um, Queen taking it down. It's not just a case of the blind levels being 30 minutes. 45,000, 90,000. <laughs> Honestly, I think they're just trolling <laughs> us now. Uh, yeah, James, I think I mentioned to Look, you. Look, when, when I see the players complaining about it, then we'll know it's a problem. But my guess is that for a 10K buy-in, nobody here is mad at a 45, 90 blind level. <laughs> I think I said to you guys in London about, you know, one of the biggest transitions if you play a lot live is going back online. Sorry, if you play online, going live is you suddenly have to do a bunch of mental math that you didn't have to do before. Okay, one sec. I'm assuming we're seeing a call from the ace queen here. It's not an inconsiderable number of chips. Does make the call. And Dinge Brinker is dominated here and hits the Ooh. jack on the river, gets lucky. A rotation situation that sees the elimination of future of me in 37th place. So just like that, within 10 minutes, three eliminations, down to 36. And Dinge Brinker, up to 9.2 million. And now Quang has joined the table. Future of me is now a thing of the past. Correct. That's... That, that cheeky smile on Joe's face. He's seeing the carnage and he's loving it today. He's like, yeah, okay, cool. Another bust, though, sure. Why not? Yeah, no, just to I mean, what I was saying, guys. I was just saying, yeah, obviously, when you go play live and they have the more unusual blind levels that they add in there, it makes it so difficult to do the mental math than when they have, you know, the 612 levels and the 750, 750, you know, 1500 levels and whatever. It's, uh, it's tricky when you're used to looking at big blinds all day. Yeah, but these are fake blind levels. That's just all I know. kind of concede yeah. that point. Um, one thing I would highlight is that the average stack has been around the 50 big blind mark for pretty much this entire tournament. And right now, they're playing deeper than that. 5.2 million is the average, and there's still nearly half an hour to go until the blinds will go to 5,100. Oh, a horseshoe for Graf Teckel. And top pair here for Dinge Brinker, the open-ended straight draw for Adrian Mateos. Amadi getting spicy here with the up and down straight draw. I think these are oh. definitely interesting spots. I, I, I can imagine a player like Amadi is probably going to randomize how frequently he's going to check raise with this straight draw here. Because once, you should be flatting here once in a while too, of course. Don't always want to check check, uh, check raise with your up and down straight draws here. And as this king hits the turn, giving Dinge Brinker trips, I notice the field ticker has now dropped down to 35 because we've lost secret mode from one of the outer tables. So it might not be too long, guys, until we're down to four tables of eight, down to 32. So Amadi does improve now on the river. He is ahead of the tens at this stage. I wonder if we see a sort of a blocker bet from Amadi or a smaller size here just to try and get control the pot of some variety. He can also check, of course, does opt for that too. Dinge Brinker now with the trippies on the river. Decides to check it back. Okay. Up to 11.3 million. Just dying to see what Amadi have there. <laughs> I mean, Mateos having quite the year. Obviously, we've seen him go deep in numerous online events and live. Won the Super High Roller in Monte Carlo. Had a deep run in the EPT London main event. I believe also had a deep run in the Prague main event back in March. Of course, EPC Prague 2022 will be taking place next month. It's easy to remember someone making a final table, but when they've made like four or five, you're just like, yeah. what was it? I think they were at all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Decides to raise small to big with ace three. 
Quang with small to queen big, big. ten. More than three X. Yeah. Yeah. Love this sizing from Amadi, especially attacking the shorter stack. Um Queen ten probably a mandatory defend though, as a call probably does come along, makes top pair. Very good kicker here with a top pair as well. Now, obviously, I've been involved in numerous conversations about Prague and plans for the event and plans for the stream. But thank you to whoever just raised hashtag embrace the squeak. I forgot to ask if anything is being done. I know there were conversations back in March about a potential solution to the problem. Because there's still a huge number of people who have not yet hashtag embrace the squeak. Um, Steve O'Dwyer among them. So I believe they are trying to uh, fix the glitch. Yannick raising here with King Six of Hearts. Graf Tekel also has hearts. 10-4. And there's a six on the flop for Yannick. Had the best hand pre, has the best hand post. Yannick now second in chips with 14 million at the start of this hand. Luis Faria still chip leader right now with 16.9 million. But Yannick has closed the gap in the last couple of orbits. Didn't they do an ice rink in Prague once? Couldn't we just put the chairs on that? <laughs> that would involve playing outside, Joe, in December. Uh, Kelvin Kerb has just been KO'd, by the way. The reason why we're down to 34 is that Kelvin FP just went out in 35th place. Curbed his enthusiasm. Might see a run in here from Graf Tekel. Ace Queen suited in the small blinds. Very, very deep at this point, these two, so might decide to play it on the slower side. Does just flat with the Ace Queen suited here. When we talk about the squeak in Prague, you either know or you don't know. And if you don't know, how about you go back and watch some of our classic <laughs> live streams? <laughs> From the Czech capital. I would love to see some content where we fly Steve O'Dwyer out a couple of days ahead of time and let him inspect <laughs> the work that's been done and see if he gives his stamp of approval. Which we, we give him like a, like a decibel meter or something. He can walk around the room just holding it up and we'll just do lots of slow-mos and B-roll of him doing that around the room. I would yeah. be on board with that if we could guarantee that Steve would be happy. But no one wants an unhappy Steve O'Dwyer. <laughs> no. That would not have, make a good video. We need to have a bit where he puts like the, the decibelometer like out the window when Sam Grafton's telling a really loud story in the in the atrium at like, you know, one o'clock in the morning or something like that. Compare it directly to the chair squeaking. That's how we know that we've uh, we've done our job. Oh, thirty three players remaining now. No Tillet. Unable to harness the power of the Catvatar. Gone in 34th place. Almost no. at... Go on. No, no, till it. Thank you, Joe. Almost at 32. <laughs> almost at four tables. And then we'll be looking at a pay jump. 31st is going to get 45.5K. Well, I don't think that this is really indicative of what we would expect for the rest of the day today. Although it is going faster than I would have thought for some reason. Just let it happen, Joe. Just let it happen. If it's, if it's fast now, it'll slow down later. That's how it works. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Craft tackle, tackle opening here with 10 and off. Yeah, going just a little bit wider than usual. Like it a lot as one of the bigger stacks. 
No fear raising into Dinge Brinker here, another one of the big stacks at our table here. Final 33 of WCOOP 2022. Wow. Time Old bank Hinge. problems already? Pretty short on time bank. Good observation, Joe. And Hinger is the second shortest stack right now. Smidge 89 from Ireland is the shortest with 1.3 million. How's that even possible? Mm, interesting spot, guys. Graf Tech will kind of with the gutter ball and the two over cards. I think there probably is a C-bet here. He likes a larger size on this sort of more dynamic low board that hits the big blind range quite hard. I like it a lot. You can probably bet if Graf Tech is using this size, it's probably the right size to use. Interesting to see if he decides to use that queen as a continue, though. Obviously, an overcard to the board sometimes can be considered a scare card if he wants to try and put a 5 or a 6 or a 7 to the test. Alas, Dingebrinker turning two pair with queen 6 of diamonds, of course. Does check. So 10-9. Not with anything more than 10 high. And a value bet from Dinge Brinker, which elicits a fold from Graf Tackle. And ace king here for Jans Arens. Graf Tackle must be gutted. Must be gutted that no one's going to be able to play this hand with them. Yeah, I might get some action from Yannick here. 10 8 off, probably it's okay to defend for the absolute min. But uh, unless we see an action flop, I mean, 10 8 sure connects with this in a sort of yeah. kind of way. You know, definitely the kind of flop True. where I think really, really experienced players stick around. Got the backdoor spades, of course, as well. And. The Ten of Spades, obviously, a decent card to have in your hand if you want to try and represent a flush on a later street, for example. Oh, man. Got it for a different reason, I'm going to say now. Graf Tekel looking at a pot of nearly a million. Decides Ooh. to check it back and gets there. Graf wow, Tekel a... with the nut straight. That's a really good run out for Ace King. That's actually very pretty. Um, Yannick not with the, the top best. pair, though, just with the 10. I think he just wants to try and get to showdown. I wonder if Ace King can, can get any value here. I mean, um, the Queen, obviously, kind of an ugly card on this river for the turned middle pair. Goes for it. 7.25. Ooh, I, I love guess the size, Yannick though. Has a bluff catcher, Nick. He does. No, absolutely. Um, I, I just don't. I think there's a lot of combos that Graf Tackle bets the flop with that connects with that queen in some way. You know, makes a straight, makes top pair. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure if Graf Tackle would have the sort of bet, check, bet, bluff line that often there. I'm honestly not sure how frequently that would happen, but... In any case, good fold from the 10. Yannick, uh, Yannick obviously playing his hand really well there, despite not winning the hand in the end. And Graf Tekel back in action. Has the sailboats, pocket fours, raises to 180k. Round to Yannick in the small blind with ace-10 offsuit. Oh, no. These two again. Flats. And Mateos getting a good price here to see a flop with four deuce of diamonds. It's all hearts on the flop. Ace-10-3. So top two for Yannick. Yeah, I'm really interested to see if Graf Tickle does decide to bet flop, and he very well might just check anyway. 
I think a lot of these sort of low pairs kind of just like to bet because they don't really have any other way to win, which seems like, you know, a way that you construct a lot of your C-bet uh, C -bet range here. I wonder if Yannick has a check raise in this situation. I was going to say, I think probably given the sort of stack depths here, I think the flat is probably more advisable. Um, you do kind of want to protect from the hearts quite often, but I think if it's going to cost you like $8 million if you make a mistake, I think the call is probably better. Um, your opponent doesn't necessarily always have a heart in this situation, even though obviously when you're starting out, whenever you see boards like this, you're thinking, oh, any heart is just going to shut me down right away. There's nothing I can do. Pocket four is do, does actually continue here, um, despite having no heart, just the pure gut shot. Yeah, it's going um, absolutely nowhere. Why didn't Amadi <laughs> call there? I mean, he's supposed to be good. I think without the heart, he's just thinking, you know, I could be drawing to... I could be drawing very thin to the uh, to the straight. <laughs> yeah. Does Graf Tackle actually rep the heart now? Is the question now that he's queued himself up for the uh, for the three barrels? Yannick is thinking oh, it's such a bad river, but I I do appreciate the sentiment of him just flatting at this stage. Woo, wow. baby! Graf Tackle just firing, mate. I absolutely love this. It is so hard to call with Ace Ten here. Can we please stop branding these bets, Graf Tickle Tickles? <laughs> <laughs> that's no tickle. So that's a that. that's a that's a two fingers right in your belly. Oh, it's it's an aggressive <laughs> tickle. <laughs> it's the kind of tickle that makes that's you very claw. very uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> nice bluff there from Graf Tickle. Up to nine million, and that takes us to the end of the first session of play, during which we lost six players. No change at the top of the leaderboard, though. Luis Faria still chip daddy with 16.2 million. Yannick Poker One, who's the big stack at our current feature table, is second on the leaderboard with 13 million. So back to the action inside of five minutes as we continue to play down to the final table on the penultimate day of this 10K World Championship of No Limit Hold'em. So a reminder that the plan is to be back tomorrow at the same time. That's 6 p.m. UK time, 7 p.m. Central European time. Every single hand from that final table. Cards up as we play down to a winner. Huge sums of money on the line. And yes, I know there is always the prospect of a deal, but in theory, we could see someone get 1.3 million for first. And of course, that prestigious championship trophy and a place in the WCOOP Hall of Fame. Uh, let's talk about something considerably less prestigious. The movie Poker Face, Joe. So this is something that you first spotted when the trailer went live a couple of months ago. We then realized there is also a TV series called Poker Face uh, from Ryan Johnson, uh, the maker of Knives Out, and of course the second Star Wars movie in the recent trilogy. Um, that probably looks like it's going to be higher quality. My fears about the Russell Crowe movie were proved in the last 24 hours when two separate people highlighted it's going straight to TV in the UK. It will be available on Sky Movies from Sunday. What's the deal in the US? Are you able to see it on something like HBO Max? From what I can tell, it's getting a theatrical release Ooh. in the US, and it'll be on video on demand a week later. And all I will say is that, yeah, it's not a great sign that it's going straight to, what is it, Sky or Sky Atlantic or something in the UK. Not a great sign, although it doesn't mean what it used to. For that to happen um it used to be guaranteed dog turd of a movie going straight to dvd or straight to straight to on television it doesn't quite mean that anymore um obviously if they thought it was going to be like a huge blockbuster it probably wouldn't go straight to tv in the uk but i don't think it necessarily means it's going to be a complete dumpster fire there's been plenty of stuff that we've seen over the last five to seven years that are straight to Netflix, straight to TV, straight to some streaming service that all are like, yeah, that was cool. That was kind of a fun movie. I, I hear what you're saying. I do, however, think there is a big difference between going direct to Netflix slash Amazon Prime slash Disney Plus and going direct to Sky. I have not yeah. yet seen a Sky original movie that I've thought, oh, <laughs> that was good. Um, 
obviously, Nick, our At ambition is At this rate, we're we... never going to get him to come on the podcast, man. we got to have a positive <laughs> attitude about this. I'm going to start the Twitter campaign. As soon as we know what days we're free to have him on, we got a big time difference between me and you in Australia, and i got to start laying on thick. We're so excited for this movie. It looks awesome. I can't wait to see it on Sky. Etc. Okay, there, there, the, the problem here is if we do t- make this a poker movie Monday and we decide to review this movie and you set up an interview with Russell Crowe, what if it isn't good? What if we have to be That's why we got to get him first. We got we to gotta talk okay. to him first and watch the movie after. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, I have no problem being completely full of... And just being like, I loved it. It was great. Let's focus on the positive. The lighting was awesome. I really liked that one shiny table. Um, boy, that girl was awfully pretty. <laughs> whatever, whatever. I can come up with – don't worry. I can kiss ass with the best of them. Okay, okay. Uh, I'll let you work on that. But the backup plan, should Russell decide that he doesn't want to come on the podcast, we will do an honest appraisal of Poker Face. And, of course, I'm going to approach it with an open mind. And I hope it's really enjoyable. At the very least, I hope it's just really, really good fun. Uh, And I've high hopes, very high hopes, for the Poker Face TV series that is completely unrelated, just happens to have the same name, and is coming to TV in 2023. Uh, Play about to resume. In the WCOOP high buy-in main event, uh, Joe, now's your perfect opportunity to draft that missive to Russell Crowe because we are heading back to our feature table. Nick and I are going to analyze the action for the next session. Uh, I did reference the trophy, by the way. The championship trophy that will be presented to the winner of this. Of course, there were 12 WCOOP events that were considered to be championships of specific disciplines. Uh, I should point out that the World Championship of PLO concludes tonight. And a reminder, there'll be a replay of that final table tomorrow afternoon. Mason Pie, Tobias Lechness, that's Pie Face Poker and Senkel 92, analyzing that action tomorrow in the run-up to the final table of this tournament. So this is a different table. We've got a new feature table, Nick. Yes, and not without a few names that we recognize. Shout out to my boy Wushu here in the big blind with four deuce off. Love to see some more action from this individual. And a couple of players we were following yesterday as well. I'm reminded of Neville Wee James. Yeah, that is Neville Costa. We've also got Thomas Mulocker. We've also got Jareth East. KZHH, a former Scoop High main event winner as well. And size 25, that is Casimir Serra, a very popular player in the community. And loving that avatar. Uh, so, blind still, 45, 90,000. And Jareth has chipped up from the start of the day. Jareth East, now fifth in chips as we join this table. Yes, indeed. So many good players to follow here today, James. Really, really good stuff. And... Um, just makes me think i mean we've been doing so much uh so much sunday million of late you know it's really cool to be back on the super high stakes scene just for a minute to see some really really high level stuff so far some pretty dramatic poker thus far and especially i'm reminded yeah. of the bluff there with those pocket fours that was very spicy indeed getting check raised by the nut flush draw here though kzhh putting king queen in kind of a tough spot i think it's probably always going to be a fold easy pick up there 9.6 million chips now in his stack yeah um And it's interesting what you say about watching these high roller events. And we've covered a fair amount of 10Ks and 5Ks during Scoop and W Coop. When it comes to the main event, there is that added kind of that shift in the dynamic because of the satellite routes as well. You don't see many satellites. They do exist, but there aren't many qualifiers going into a 10K or 25K high roller. Whereas when it comes to the main event at the end of the series, so many qualification paths, and we do get lots of players satelliting in. So you get some new faces, some unknowns, which change things somewhat. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it kind of reminds me somewhat of the PSPC or the like, you know, where we have so many people that have won platinum passes or they've qualified through whatever, whatever means that, uh, you know, they've had available to them. Uh, which makes that such a dynamic event with so many well-known players who are just going to really, really do well in that field. And obviously the opportunity for some players coming in with yes. uh, probably playing miles and miles outside of their of, of their of their sort of comfort zone and really, really would love to see some qualifiers going super deep um, here. And then, of course, also 
uh, in Prague and subsequently in uh, the Bahamas as well, if possible. Uh, Scuba Doo asks, is the Poker in the Air podcast on YouTube? It is, first and foremost, an audio podcast available on all the apps and distribution platforms where you get audio shows. But normally, most weeks, the interview or a section of the interview does make it onto the PokerStars YouTube channel. So you can check out some highlights from recent podcasts. Well, jacks are still good here. And Size 25 is going to bet 765,000 on the turn. Just ace high and a gut shot for KZHH, but the raise Nick to 1.8 million. Yeah, using that blocker to powerful effect here. I mean, Jack's obviously going to be confident that they have the best hand here quite often, but it's not the best turn in the world. I mean, king four, king three, king seven, maybe not in the small blind, though. I think those are unlikely, which is why he's going to call, and he makes those trips on the wow. river. Absolutely no way out. SPR way yeah. less than one. Uh, don't follow through on that bluff. Do not jam river because you always going to get cold. Yep. KZH does try and take it away from on the turn. Does he have the nows to miss the shove? I mean, it's just not that much more, James. If there's any chance he can get a fold here, it's such a cheap price for him to try. He does attempt it. Snap called by the trip jacks. And a full double for Cease 25 here. Very nice hand. What a nice... You know when you make a tentative call on the uh, on the turn, James, and you're like, I think I have the best hand, and the river's just like, yeah, you got it, buddy. Go for it. You win. You win the pot. So up to 7.5 million as KZ drops down to 5.9 million. Average stack right now is 5.75 million with 33 players remaining. After the next elimination, we will be down to four tables, four tables of eight, and then there will be an impending money jump. Right now, everyone's earned $37,000. You can make it to 31st, you lock up nearly 45 and a half thousand. Schreiberg in the chat asking, do you think any of these guys have other jobs or most are fully committed to poker? poker? Well, James uh, just listed off a few that I know are definitely fully, fully committed to poker for sure. Very, very well known, very, very successful. Lots and lots of big results in these kinds of fields. And if they're doing well in these fields, they're probably doing extremely well in the live scene as well. Very, uh, very transferable skills when you're absolutely annihilating the best in the world at the highest stakes here online. Some of the best, best, best. Uh, you obviously cannot online. question their commitment to poker. You can, however, question their commitment to sparkle motion. 10-9 uh, <laughs> suited flops. Well, that is a flush draw for Sayazika. Former tournament chip leader who's now on the low side with 2.3. Oh, that's a great quote, James. Well done. I'm starting to seriously doubt your dedication to Sparkle Motion. <laughs> Name that film, chat. Go for it. And Saizika all in with the semi-bluff. Actually has more equity right now than KZHH, who, strictly speaking, is ahead with King High, but the hand is over on the flop. That's right, Joe Stapleton. Donald Darkness. Donald. Donald Darkness. See? He's able to tap out words on his keyboard, his other hand firmly around that hot dog. One hand on the crank, one hand on the hot dog, typing with his nose. A6 seated, going to open up from the button here. Art House, 9-7 off, but is looking quite shallow here. Less than 20 big blinds. So I think might just try and give that one a miss, wait for a better spot. Don't forget, guys, we do have these luxury blind levels. As James pointed out, not only do they take a long time to come around, 30-minute levels at the moment, but also, of course, we have these fake blind levels too. 45K, 90K, what is that? That's such an internet, internet level. Ace-queen off now for Neville. Just going to make it the just above min. It's actually heading towards closer to a 3x now at this point. Interesting to see him using a larger size here once we get shallower here. I, 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 don't, I don't hate it. I think actually having an alternative size here is quite cool. And it looks like he's going to get some action. Cease is going to put in the super, super, super mini 3-bet. I don't think Ace-Queen's going anywhere, though, at this stage. It's got to be a rip, James. It's got to be. There it is. There we go. Uh, Be My Girl has a question on Twitch, which is a fair one. Question for the hosts. 
That'll be me and you, Nicholas. Why do we get to see the boat races of the presenters for these online tournament streams, but not for the live ones? And for those of you not from the Unitedist of Kingdom, <laughs> boat race <laughs> is Cockney rhyming slang for face. Face. Um, because if you treat live poker like a sport, and I'm not one of those people who thinks poker is a sport, but I think the way in which it's covered and the way in which we stream and televise it is like sporting coverage. You don't see the commentators during live sport, right? You see the actual players because it's about them. And that's the way I think it should be. But when you cover online poker, when all you have to work with are avatars at a table, I think having us in vision gives it a human element and makes it, and I could be wrong here, but makes it slightly more appealing visually rather than just looking at a screen. Uh, but yes, I think when it comes to live poker, you don't want to see us. You want to see the actual players at the table who are playing the game, who are competing for serious sums of money. <laughs> also, you guys probably don't actually want to see us. We're just locked in a back room usually somewhere, you know, cups of coffee everywhere, you know, hoodies on. We're giving you that prime grade A radio experience, but the visual ain't so hot. That's why these guys got to slap on a... Slap on a suit, you know, when they're doing the, the video stuff. They do that really well. But, you know, you get a little bit of boat race. You get, you get a little bit of temporary boat race from James and Joe. Uh, the screeching weasel says, I don't even want the players. Just full screens of your mugs. <laughs> right. No, no plans for an annual sexy James calendar. I cannot believe that was even a question, albeit a joke. Oh, oh James, you got to do it now. You got to do it. Oh, can you? Okay. Seriously, chat. I know you guys would buy that. It would be the most successful merch that Poker in the Years has ever put out. If we did that cheeky mock, smile. A, if we did like a mock <laughs> kind of like Playboy calendar with me and Joe yeah. doing kind of like sexy poses on like luxury sports cars in fur coats. <laughs> yes, mate. Let's do it. No, 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 no. It's going to be... It's going to be like James Bond vehicles and fur coats or like, you know, something like that. It's got to be right on brand, you guys. I would definitely, I would definitely buy those for my family. I would buy How those as F gifts for people. How the is that on brand, Nick? Because <laughs> it's James Bond. It's you, you know. It's, you know, it's part of your identity, you know. And then Joe can have his, like, do his shoot in like a little go golf cart with a hot dog or something, you know. Holding a hot dog bun or something. <laughs> The visual. Oh, God. Thank you for that question, Be My Girl. Look at the can of worms <laughs> that have now been opened. I would buy those for my family and then give them to, like, I would buy, like, five and give them to people in my family who have no idea who you are, just completely unironically. Just be like, yeah, cool. I thought you might want a calendar for this year. Come on, chat. You know you're in. KZHH versus Jareth East, and KZHH has turned. Second pair. Ooh, is there Queen. some value now for the Jack Deuce? Yeah, Queen on the River has not changed anything. It was an open-ended straight draw on the turn for Jareth, but he doesn't get there. Finally, a legitimate blind level, and one for which the human calculator is renowned. Renowned from being able to calculate the number of big blinds each player has. 50,000, 100,000 for the next 30 minutes. Ace 10 opening UTG. Wushu with the sixes. Bit of a tricky one there, Sixes. I think definitely the smaller pairs here become a little bit closer to a fold at this stage, but both players are relatively deep at this stage as well, so might even see him coming along with pairs like, you know, fours, threes, whatever. The biggest issue I have with flatting some of the smaller pairs isn't that you don't have a good price to set mine. It's more to do with the fact that when you're playing against really good players, there's lots of players behind you that will squeeze as bluffs, and they put you in really tough spots where you pretty, pretty much just have to give up every time. You've got no recourse once you flat, and then you're, you're facing a three-bet from the button or the cutoff or the big blind, for example. Um, I'd forgotten 
because it was some time ago. Uh, Thomas Mulocker won a WQ title earlier this series. It was back in September. Uh, it was a 5K turbo PKO, and it was worth nearly $120,000. Uh, Mulocker does have $7.7 .7 million in total live earnings. Most of his online results not in the public domain, but obviously if you win something like a W Coupe, that is going to go on your record. Folding around. Queen Deuce off. I don't know if KZH wants to go that wide, but he's in the cutoff with the opportunity. 8-9 suited now on the button. Probably always going to be a player, though. Very, very pretty hand when you get to play it from position. So it's point a button raise five x from Jareth, the Goblin King. Dance, baby, dance! And what a flop. Has the flush draw. Just a little C-bet. Just, just not, doesn't have to be big. Just a little one. Nice. Okay, I'm going to translate this question. I appreciate that whoever wrote this is not a native English speaker. Um, when you see a heads-up situation and there are the percentages of the hands, it does not take into consideration folded cards. So the equities are not spot on. Yes, correct. Which makes sense as well, right? Because those of you watching this will know that this is a recreation of something that happened in the past, and therefore those are the numbers that you would see if you were in the hand. Obviously, yeah. you would only see the numbers that are relevant to you because you're the only, and, you know, if there was an all-in, perhaps the others that were all-in against you usually only heads up. And in those situations, there's no way that the system would know what the other players had folded because, Correct. of course, this is a recreation, etc. cetera. So um, it's the same as if you were doing the sort of uh, equity calculations in your head. So you're counting, I have nine outs to hit a flush, for example. Assuming your opponent doesn't have one of them, then you do have, you know, whatever is, 18% with one card to come, 36 with two, something like that. Only the known cards count. Yes, sir. 9-7, still the best hand here. Does decide to call ace on the river. Yeah, interesting to see if Art House decides to continue here, especially without a spade. Just checks. 9-7 probably with Showdown is going to check again here. I don't know if you want to turn a pair of sevens into a bluff here. I was thinking about it, though. Yep, check, check. 9-7 does take it. So we saw a flurry of eliminations during the first session of play taking us down to 33 no bust out since we've come back from break and ace is here for kzhh opens under the gun saizika does not defend Ooh, wow yeah i appreciate guys that some of you are trying to get information about specific players or specific stack sizes from the PokerStars lobby. Remember, anything you look at in the client is going to be in real time. And we are streaming on a 30-minute delay. So please respect that delay. And please do not post information from the past yep. in the chat. Because if we yep. all stick with the same delay, we can't have the experience spot for us. Yeah, don't spoil yourselves, and also it's a it's a serious like no tolerance situation. So if you're new here, yeah, please please heed that. Don't even joke about it because you will just get snap banned. It's not cool. So, a snowman's for Neville. Num 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 num. Num num. Ooh, this is a really tough one, though, James. Honestly, I think you're just supposed to rip it in against the big stack here. He does decide to take the all-in. Neville goes, wee And at risk here. Pocket 10's got a call here, I think, if you're Jareth. You don't absolutely love it, but... Oh, this is really close, because eights is definitely still in there. And it is a domination situation, and Neville needs to hit on the river and doesn't. Instead, we get a Greenstein. And with that table breaking... We are going to switch over Switching. to chip leader Luis Farrier's table. Luis playing 15 million. 
Still has slightly more than Yannick Poker 1, who sits in second place on the leaderboard. Notice that Saizika has taken a seat here as well. Yeah, that was a really tricky one, though. Obviously, the shorter stack there is going to shove some smaller pairs, but you'd love him to have, like, two, twos, threes, fours, five, sixes, but he just won't usually, so that's why it's a lot closer than it might look. But just priced in, makes the call, is crushed, and GG as we see a three bets to 600k. Yep. Saizika now with the pocket 10s, dominating the jack 10 suited from Yon. And obviously with Neville going out in 33rd place, we are now down to four tables and we are on a money ladder. Next player out 37k. Oh. Player after that 45k. And Saizika at risk but way ahead and oh. does not fade the jack on the river and just like that, we lose Saizika. That will take us down to 31. And that means everyone has now locked up $45,500. Uh, you, can, you can see what Jan was trying to do there. And I do appreciate the power play. Um, that's a ton of big blinds to get in the middle, though. And uh, very unfortunate river for pocket tens there. GG. And uh, Jan now up to almost 12 million chippies. That's a savage one. Yeah. So Saizika, a former chip leader in this event, gone in 32nd place. The short stack now is Art House 2011. That player, by the way, has been the short stack for at least the last 15 minutes. So Art House has done a pretty good job of outlasting two players and laddering. And Ma, Ace is still ma, good ma, here. Ma, ma, 70. I Mama would say... Ma 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 ma. Ma 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 ma. Seventy. Do 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 do. Ma 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 ma. Has ma, ma, ma. a full house. <laughs> ma 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 ma. Has bet the turn now. Ma 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 ma. Ace queen for yawn. With all those newfound chips as well, gonna go ahead and open this one up. Folding around. Art House, very shallow here. 7.59234 big blinds. Oh, look at this sick cooler emerging. Uh, yeah. a, a doctor with the kings. Chip leader Luis Faria with the queens. Yeah, look at the effective stack here, James. Uh, a doctor under 30 effective before he makes this raise. I just don't think there's any way out for the queens here. You're just always going to get stacked by the kings or potentially spike when you're queens as well. Getting three back with kings in this spot at this stage in the tournament, you're like, here we go. This is what I've been waiting for for the last six months. I'm making a final table today. Let's go. And I'm just hearing from the production team that AA Doctor is not a real doctor. <laughs> All in with Rip the Kings. Luis Faria calls with the Queens and AA Doctor set for the double up here. The Queen oh. on the river. Another play gets done dirty and we are switching as Luis Faria increases his chip lead. Now has close to 18 million and we have gone back to our original feature table where we find Dinge Brinker with the Snowmen's. Nom, nom. Nom, nom. Which are good on the river. Adrian Mateos with a pair of sixes loses the pot. We've got Mateos. We've got Dinge Brinker. We've got Graf Tackle. We've got Jareth East. I like this table. Let's watch the action. <laughs> oh, there's no justice in this game, James. There's no justice. I, everyone should stop looking for justice because there's none to be found here. Oh, my goodness. So much savagery, guys. We're already down to 30. As we see Yannick here on the button with those trays. Um, and, again, this lovely blind level. We get to see how many bigs Amadi has directly. Queen in the big blind with a very nice squeezable hand. I think Amadi probably flats here, and then Ace-10 probably squeezes as a jam most of the time. 
I think that this effective stack depth just shoving here with all that dead money. Ace-10 suited is way up here. You're absolutely destroying Yannick's range as an open. He can be pretty much opening any two if he'd like against these two short stacks with all of his 14 mils. There it is. Easy game. 2.6 million going in the middle. Big pick up there. Kojak for Jareth. Wonder how wide Yannick goes here, James. I don't know if maybe he's going to consider maybe flatting with some of these wider King 10 off. I mean, I feel like you're kind of, even though you do have a bigger stack here, I feel like, yeah, I think I prefer the fold generally. But um, you're really trying to give yourself an opportunity to go big there. I think King 10 off does connect, but often you can cold deck yourself if you're facing King Queen, Ace King, Ace 10, that yeah. kind of thing where you're dominated pre flop. Nom, nom. Nom, nom. Snowman's for Henja. And pocket threes for Dinge Brinker. Well, that's a fold. Now, what is Pappy going to do with fives in the big blind? Oh, dear. Great price to set mine, James. This is actually a spot where you're probably very happy to just see a flop and try and spike a five. Ooh, or a little bit of action with the straight draws. Yeah, you and obviously Henja still ahead, but... 40% near enough for Pappy. Yeah, it's a spot where you don't mind seeing an ace as well, right? You know, usually when you've got fives on this board, you're concerned about your opponent hitting ace-king. You know, hitting, a king, uh, hitting an ace with ace-king, ace-jack, ace-queen, that kind of thing from that earlier position range. Just going to rip it here. Not messing around at all. Pappy is all in. And Hinja Rem Hoos gets it in oh. good. Has to fade. The straight does not fade. The six on the turn gives Pappy the straight. And the qualifier is gone in 30th place. So a reminder, Hinja Remhus qualified for $215 into a 10K. And turn that into a 45.5K cash out. That smashes their previous record. Their biggest cash before that was around two grand. So congratulations, but also condolences for that 30th place finish and for losing in such brutal fashion. Yeah, Pappy obviously has a ton of equity there, just really trying to apply pressure to those over cards. You can see what was going on there. You can see, you can see what's going through their head. Might have done something similar with like a pair. Oh. Might have seen something happen with a pair in like a straight draw as well, potentially in the same situation from Pappy, but GG's. Uh, Stuart Wallace, watching on YouTube, asks, is it just me or is this commentary stale? Not just you, Stuart. I've been doing this for too many years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What a savage, savage burn. All right. Pocket five still the best hand here from Yannick. Martin asking, are there any notable players left? Yeah, plenty. And many of them on this table. Millions. Like Adrian Mateos, Jan Zarens, Jareth East. Online beasts like Dinge Brinker and Yannick Poker. I mean... Jareth taking it down five doesn't find the hero call. <laughs> uh, you know what? I love your commentary, James. You're doing a great job. It's never stale for me, buddy. Thank you, Nick. Like freshly baked sourdough bread. Artisanal sourdough every morning. Artisanal sourdough. I have to say, I, I, I've i missed the opportunity to bring in the sourdough meme because most people are folding it. Has it lost its power or is it no longer in fashion? James, I like, I like to imagine that we are so influential that we've turned people off the Ace-5 suited meta because we've brought it to the forefront that, first of all, it never works. The five bet jam with Ace-5 suited is always getting it bad. And second of all, people are just so aware of it now. We've brought this to the world. It's just happening all over. People have to adjust their strategies again, something like that. Okay, well, we've got ace-king here for Quing, ace-jack for Pappy, fives for Yannick in the small blind. <laughs> oh, 
I love you, Twitch chat. You're the best. Oh, Ace Jack, what you gonna do? I don't, I don't mind a fold here, James. Honestly, I mean, you're. It's just such a weird spot. Queen is gonna be quite tight opening off of this stack depth at this stage in the tournament. I think. Yeah. I think I, I think I kind of prefer a fold here. Again, I'm not saying that based on the fact he's got Ace King under the gun. I just, uh, I just, it just feels. If I put myself in Poppy's shoes, it just feels a little bit like I'm just gonna get wrecked if I flat. It feels a little bit like I'm gonna get wrecked a lot if I three bet. I don't imagine that you're going to want a 3-bet call here, though. So if you are going to play it as a 3-bet, it's a good fold. I think that the 3-bet from that position does look strong, so I don't think Pappy's making a mistake, for, uh, you know, uh, necessarily. But uh, the Ace-King obviously winning that one. As we see, 5-7 suited from Dingebrink are going to be opening up here. Again, like to see these wider ranges from these positions, especially from one of our bigger stacks. Queen with a potential defend here in the big blind. Queen 9 off. And Mr. McCreel asking on Twitch, will they play to the end today or will it continue tomorrow? The latter. They'll play to nine tonight, pick up the action tomorrow with nine players remaining and play to a winner. Um, well, this is interesting. Top pair versus straight draw plus backdoor diamond potential. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, the 7-5 seed here, very, very well disguised. You know, one of the cool things about being able to mix up a little bit of a wider range from this position is when you do get there, it feels, you know, when you get there with a hand like 7-5 suited and you're defending your big blind, people go, oh, you can have all kinds of straights here. You can have like 7-5 suited. You can have like 7-8 here. But uh, when you're the initial opener, having some of that board coverage is really, really cool. And uh, he's going to go ahead and put in a bet here. Queen with the decision on the flop. That will definitely be very important at this stage. Does decide to go for a check race, which is perfect. If he thinks Dinge Brinker is going to have combos like this in his range. Oh, James, what were oh, you saying about backdoor diamond diamonds? Draw. <laughs> and it's also uh, an ace, which might slow Queen down as well. So it's yes. even more spicy to try and see that river and see if he completes one of his two draws. By the I way, mean, if you're wondering, he went out in 29th place. Art House 2011 had been clinging on for an eternity, but could cling on no longer. So Art House 2011 went in 29th. We're now at 28 players. And right now, Luis Faria, who started the day as chip leader, is still chip leader with 18 million. Dinge Brinker betting a million on the turn here. And yeah, that's a I mean, third like, of Queen stack neck. That's what I was going to say. If Queen doesn't continue this turn, I mean... How often does he check raise with two pair and then not bet the ace? Like, why would you miss the opportunity to continue leading into a card that's going to hit your opponent's range? I mean, any bet of any variety is going to feel really, really bad in that scenario. So I do appreciate that the smaller sizing was enough to get the fold. But, uh, yeah, it really is a tough a tough turn, and it's just very unlucky that Dinge Brinker does have the diamonds to go with it, or we might have actually seen another slowdown there. But potentially always going to bluff the ace regardless. We don't know now. Blind v. Blind, Queen in the small, Graf Tekel in the big. I think King-9 is usually a steal in this situation, Blind v. Blind, when we're at 30-ish uh, bigs, but you usually want to go bigger, so like 3.5x, something like that. Could go either way, though. I'm pretty sure it'll be a split uh, split between a limp and a raise here. Oh, 3.2, sure, why not? I'll take it. I'll take it. Graf Tekel... Defends and does not connect. Quing, on the other hand, connects big time. Trip nines. Yeah, I would like to see a really small continue here, like a quarter pot sizing, blind v. blind. I think that's usually the size you want to use here as a bluff as well, so it's nice and balanced. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it, sir. Graf Low calls. Can. Yep. Does I was gonna pick say. up a Gut shot and a flush draw on the turn has 25% now. Yeah, James, this actually might be one of those spots where if Queen continues, Graf Tackle tries to kind of use that diamond and as a as a, bl a sort of semi bluff and raise the turn, representing a, represent a nine, represent the diamonds, that kind of thing. It's not completely wild to think that he can try and make a play against Queen here. 
Although I have to say the 700K continue on the turn is quite confident. It, to me, this, this looks like... He's big. Yeah, it looks like he's trying to protect a hand, and I think that for that reason he's going to get away. Okay, we are switching. As we check in on Chris Mormon for the first time this evening, along with KZHH, who we referenced earlier on, won the Scoop main event a couple of years back. Tank Hansa, Gianluca Sperenza, a two-time Scoop main event winner in back-to-back -back years. Oof, it's another combo draw turn, James, for the ace-jack. Picking up that gut shot with the queen and, of course, the diamonds to go with it. KZH, you got to fire again. This is a big blind range. Oh, misses it, but unfortunately for the ace-jack, does not complete, so king-6 is still the best of it. I don't think ace-jack needs to necessarily bluff here Yeah, if they think that uh, their ace-high is going to be good, and it will, I think, on this paired board quite frequently. So we do see a check from Juice. Uh, and Justus was the player who came into day two as chip leader. That is Thorsten Legit. Okay. Fires on the river. Trying to go for some value. Good to see Boss Dog still going strong. Boss Dog. Yeah, Slightly I think below that's one average. Of it's one of those situations, James, where like you kind of knowing your opponents, or at least knowing if your opponent plays poker or doesn't play poker frequently makes a big difference on that river because I think a really good player Nick. very rarely will... Yep. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Oh, sourdough suited. <laughs> it's back. The commentary may be stale, but artisanal sourdough is not. Always fresh. And if KZHH decides to get <laughs> funky here and four bets Mormon with ace five suited. Did I preempt the move already, James? Have I already if I already in, I've envisioned it. It's it's happening now. Sorry, ace five suited, gotta do it, I'm all in. <laughs> For the fans, it's artisanal. Kazen does it's artisanal. It. I told you, I told you. <laughs> It's always oh, getting there. It's five. always getting there. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Chris Mormon. I'm so Chris. sorry, but... <laughs> Chris. Not like this, Christopher. What did I tell you, James? I literally said we're going to see some 4-bet, 5-bet jam from Ace 5 suited. That's always bad. Oh. But when you hit that board... You can't yeah. complain. So KZHH eliminates Chris Mormon. He's gone in 28th place. KZHH up to more than 11.5 million. Again, favoring the big stacks is what this software does every time. Always favoring the big stacks there. Unbelievable. Oh, so you guys, it's, yeah, we don't call it, we don't have a name for that hand for, for any old, any old nonsense reason, you know? There's a reason for it. And we see it so frequently. It's just a I glitch mean, in the I, Matrix. You just gotta I do it I don't know if you've noticed this, Nick, but there clearly is a pattern. Every time a player is eliminated, the big stack wins. That I've seen that. I've, I, I've, yeah, it's all finally coming together. Um, yeah, we're living in a simulation, James. Have you ever noticed, James, how when you get on a bus, it's much bigger than a car? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. King 7 suited opening up here from Justus. <laughs> I still can't get over that story. That was a great one. 6 7 suited for K E Z H H in the big blind. Um, Quite deep here, does decide to come along. Mark on YouTube highlights that the hand which saw KZHH eliminate Chris Mormon was a street flash flop. I'll have to save it for the next one, guys. It'd be inappropriate. So, K 
KZHH table chip leader, currently ranked fourth overall behind Dinge Brinker, Yannick Poker, and Luis Faria, who's closing in on the 20 million mark now. Uh, we do have some fun, don't we, all James? Unbelievable. A little raise here from the King 5 off blind v blind. Do you like that steal a lot? <laughs> Jax for Justus. Luck box with ace 10. All in. Well, this is getting called. Yes, sir. Good spot. Are He's we going to see the best hand hold up for once, or will it favor the big stack? You can't have it both ways. <laughs> it's going to favor the Jack's big Jack's two hold. <laughs> and that is going to see the elimination of luck box. And that's going to take us down to 25 players. Oh, that's because Smidge 89 from Ireland won in 27. Luck box out in 26th. Drop in like flies. So we are indeed already down to 25 players. Boss Dog does have the opportunity to bet here. I would prefer a check, I think. I don't know. When you're playing against decent players who know how to play their blinds, usually if they're going to check Ace-9-7, they're actually just going to have some showdown that they don't really want to fold. So if you're going to bluff in this spot, I think you probably want some some kind of equity, some gut shots, maybe some two over cards to a nine, something like that. Having exactly trade deuce, just a pure backdoor uh, a straight draw, excuse me, it just doesn't feel great. I think it's okay just to give up here in these situations. You don't always necessarily need to read um, more passive behavior as weakness and try and attack it at all times. Um, if you know your opponent is the kind of guy that's just going to play fit or fold or the kind of individual who's going to play fit or fold, then obviously you can just go ahead and bet there every time. But I think at this level, we know that people are thinking a little bit more than that. I just realized, I mean, it seemed like only five minutes ago that we got down to 32 players. We're one elimination away from being down to the final three tables. We're nearly at 24 already. Let's go. Getting into the thick of it quite quickly here. Let us go. As, as our good friend Griffin Benja would say, and he will be joining us later on, what's going on, people of Sweden? <laughs> uh, I'm just looking at the field now, James, and it's... I mean, we've oh. got... You know. Oh, you don't look at the field. Look at this okay. hand. Well, I'm going to look at the hand instead. And I don't think there is going to be any justice for Justus here is about to run ace-king into kings. Oh, the biggest stack, eh, James? Three bets to 615, and I imagine KZ will shove on Thorsten, and we will have an all-in situation, and let's see if there will be an ace on the desk. Maybe Barry Greenstein will make an appearance. Use your time back. Make it look good. All in and a call. Justus at risk. Justus way behind. Needs Barry. Doesn't hit. That's a KO. We're down to 24. And we are switching as that table breaks. And the blinds go up to 60,120,000. In fact, there was a double KO on that hand. A player went out from one of the other tables as well. It was I'm the Nuts. So it takes us down to 23. Wow. And it was Luis Faria who took him out. So notice that Faria is now playing 22 million. Wow, some huge stacks now, James. It looks like it's going to be one of those where we just see a couple big snowballs start to sort of soak up some of these shorties. Just looking at our remaining players here, we got two players, uh, sorry, excuse me, three or four players here around the 25 big blind mark. So still a couple people yes. that definitely are at risk although perhaps not quite in the super danger zone no so basically room for a bit more consolidation before maybe things start to slow down yep 
That's what it feels like. I mean, what are we looking at right now? We are at the 6120 level. Average stack is 8.2 million. So we're significantly above a 50 big blind average. And, of course, we don't go 60, 120 to 80, 160, Nick. Oh, no. There's a 70, 140 level in the middle. <laughs> so silly. <laughs> Pocket Kings here for one of our shorter stacks here. Prudently makes it 600k to go, just a little bit less than a 3x. Um, against that early open from the King 8 suited, which is definitely part of that range. I mean, I'm surprised that we go 7140 to 8160. We went to 75150. Actually, one I'm joking. One of these old-fashioned levels. Let, let, let me just double-check <laughs> that isn't actually a thing. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not. It's not. All right, we see some blind v blind action here, guys. Ace eight in the big blind. Um, it's an awkward stack depth. I honestly don't mind a check here from Ace eight. A lot of players will just go, "Oh, I've got an ace. He limped. I should be attacking this limp." Um, it can be very tricky to play against really good players at this stack depth. Uh, if you feel like you're going to get raised off a hand, that's kind of be the best hand quite often. Uh, pre flop. Check check check. And on the turn, of course, going to have the best hand a lot here with Ace-8. I wonder if Boss Dog fires this. Probably not. I think you can imagine that Jack High is the best hand here still quite frequently. But it go, can go either way. He does decide to attack that Ace. Seems good. I think definitely either a bet or a check is going to be cool. Both have merit. Ace-8 going literally nowhere. Well, that 10 on the river does give Boss Dog a pair, but not the best hand. Yep, plenty of showdown. I mean, he might even try and go small here to get value from like a 5. Yeah, I really like this size. I mean, obviously, you're kind of controlling the pot as well. If your opponent does have an ace, it's quite difficult for them to make a raise unless they perceive the smaller rate uh, bet to be more of a blocker bet and try and get value from a 10 or a 5 themselves. Pretty unusual not to see a 5 bet the flop, though, if you are uh, in this situation. Very, very astute raise here from Yon, though. Does pick up on that sort of sizing tell from Boss Dog on the river. One thing I should highlight, Nick, is that now we're down to 23 players. There has been another jump in prize money. Everyone is now locked yeah. up just over $55,000. 55k. We're de you're definitely starting to get into the, the juicy payouts now. A little bit of a 5x on a 10k starts to feel really, really good, and that just shows you... With 23 left, 23 left, excuse me, guys, you're getting 5x your money. So that just goes to show you how big our absolute maximum first place payout is going to be um, in terms of buy-ins. You know, guys, it's really, really, really significant for, for a 10k buy-in to have um, such a big multiplier on first place. Yeah. As Boss Dog raises the button with Jack-9 suited. And... As Geisto is going to call out of the big blind with Jack Deuce and flops two pair. Boss Dog with just second pair. Oh, this is this is a tough spot for Boss Dog. You're going to have the best hand alone. Oh, oh, hello. Th now that Boss Dog does turn. have the best hand. Okay, two pair versus two pair. How much value can Boss Dog get on this? How close to a double up can Boss Dog get in this hand? Yeah, I was going to say, I think Koj Gisto here is supposed to lead significantly. I really like the size here from the Jack Deuce because, of course, the two-pair Jack Deuce is assuming they're getting value at this point. They're trying to get max um, from some Jack X, some 9X, some sp spade draws, um, potentially some combos like Ace-King that might have decided to check the flop, although we do see that probably see that quite frequently as well. Um, and, of course, Jack-9 feeling pretty pretty good about their hand at this stage. Yeah, I mean, it is a straighty, flushy board. I don't think you get too carried away here, so right. I don't see this bet getting right. anything other than called, which is what happens. But still a decent pot for Boss Dog, and we are switching once again and dropping in on Graf Tekel and KZHH as we see Graf Tekel with queens and KZ with aces. Oh, this could be the demise of Jan Zarens who was so dominant yesterday. Also, we've also got Adrian Mateos and Jareth East at this table as 
Graf Tickle just flats. Interesting play. Well, King-10 comes along as well from the big blind. Does not connect, but for Graf Tekel and KZ, it is over pairs apiece. And, and now both players have a full house. Oh, I think this is just one of those, Yannick, isn't it, James? I think Yannick's really frustrated right now. I think Yannick's kind of like kicking himself. <laughs> guys are professionals he's not bothered graph tackle thinking he's going for ultimate max value this is kind of a reverse of the previous or sorry recreation of the previous spot you know both players thinking they've got a very 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 strong holding of course very rarely beaten in this situation i would be quite surprised not to see graph tackle go for more value here or what he perceives to be value against these aces i, I hate to say it i don't see how graph tackle survives here it's a tough one isn't it uh, 2.28, leaving himself 3.7 behind. KZ lets the time bank go down a little bit, then pulls the trigger on the shove, and I wouldn't blame Graf Tekel for calling. Here it comes. All in. And Graf Tekel is going to think about this. Give him credit. Has not snap called. But I don't see how you fold this full house, Nick. I don't see how you do it. Ugh, it's so hard. It's so hard, especially given the street so far. It's just like, I mean, I don't know if KZ is ever bluffing here is the thing, right? So, it's I don't know. Uh, you're beating so many over pairs as well, though. You know, I don't know if tens would play it like this. I don't know if jacks. I mean, jacks and tens might still really convince themselves that they have the best of it given the preflop action here. So could still be shoving for value, maybe. I don't know. It's a really, really weird, weird spot the way it was played preflop. So it's difficult to know what to do. <sighs> if I mean, anybody can make the hero fold, is graph tackle though. I agree. And the longer this goes on, the more chance there is that he folds it. Ten seconds left on his clock. Five seconds left to make a decision. Graf Tekel Ugh. does make the call. I understand the call, but it will see Jans Arens KO'd from the tournament, cashing out for just over 55 grand. And look at KZ Stack. The former Scoop main event champion has just taken the chip lead in this high buy-in WCOOP main event. Now it's Jareth, three betting with King Jack suited into Yannick's Kings. Um, where are we at right now? So I'm thinking probably a small four bet is what you want to do here. Something like two point, yeah, two point five mil. Something like two point seven seems good as well. Uh, the four bet sizing here is usually two point five x the uh, the three bet, um, yeah, and so thereabouts feels good from Yannick. Obviously, they're on the deeper side, so a little bit more feels good too. And Jareth gets away from the suited Kojak. Now we have Ace Ten suited for the chip leader. Not unplayable hands over here. Queen Jack for Queen. Raises to 240, and KZ just flats out of the small blind. Dinge Brinker getting a decent price in the big blind, but King-5, Yeah, I mean, I think if he wants to come along here, um, the flat is fine. I think also it's not completely wild to think that he has maybe a 3 that bluff there once in a while. 
might prefer a different combo than King 5, but obviously having the high card in your hand and a sort of a having the high card with sort of a trashy hand you don't mind folding to a 4 bet is also decent grounds this for uh, for a squeeze there. This board. Top pair. <laughs> but look at KZ's equity here with the ace high flush draw, the nut flush draw, and a continuation bet of 420,000 from Quing. Wow, is 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 Queen's hand gonna hold? Three to one favorite now. Yeah, I was gonna say I think if Dingebrinker probably isn't behind him, I, d I don't know if maybe KZ wants to play this more aggressively and try and rep like nines or sevens, maybe uh, maybe get his opponent to fold a hand like pocket jacks, pocket tens once in a while here um, with a check raise when you know you're gonna have a ton of equity in these scenarios as yeah. opposed to just the flat, but. You don't also want to be doing that when you got another player to act behind you. You can actually have some of those combinations, although nines probably get squeezed some of the time. Maybe sevens even get squeezed once in a while, too. Queens for sure. And the ace on the river is good for the old ace 10. I mean, was it ever in doubt? Did you ever think for one second that KZ was not going to win this hand? Oh... <laughs> uh, I mean, is Queen going to consider shoving this river? Surely not. I don't know. Well, it's, uh, it's the crazier things have happened. It does make the check, and it does go towards Ace 10 suited. And that is going to take us to the second break of the day. And a lot happened in that 55 minutes of play. We've lost 11 players. We've seen a change in the chip lead. It is KZHH from Hungary, a former scoop winner who has close to 26 million chips. Should point out the start of day chip leader, Luis Farrier is still a big stack with 21.8 million. Sits in second place on the leaderboard right now. As we welcome Joe Stapleton back into the mix. Uh, Joe, I'd love to summarize what happened in the last hour, but too much. And the fast pace of play has continued. So six eliminations during the first session, 11 eliminations during that session, down to 22 players. It has to slow down. The mathematics dictates. Although, if you've got two players, Nick, if you've got Luis Fari, if you've got KZ with all the chips and everyone else is relatively shallow, the average stack does not tell the whole story. No, absolutely, and we've, we've spoken about this at great length so many times. We've been in the arena so many times looking at the different dynamics that we see late game, and we kind of have these sort of days where it goes really slow, then it goes really fast at the end, and we have situations where we see a few extremely talented uh, big stacks just start to snowball and just start to take out some of those shorter stacks with that big stack aggression, and I feel like we're probably getting more of that today. We're seeing a lot of the big stacks just really snowballing and taking out a lot of the shorties, and um, as usual, again, when people are, become really obsessed about um, average stack they go oh you know how are you doing in the tournament buddy like you know you're checking in with your friend who's in the middle of uh, you know day two or something they go oh i'm below average i really got some work to do and you go well the average really doesn't tell the story you need to play the stack that you're given knowing the average can be useful if you're making decisions for you know if you want to gamble and stuff like that when you are in positions to go all in and um and the like and you know some icm implications as well but uh, sure enough, yeah, like you say, there's just some shorties and some big stacks, and we're starting to see the, two, the divide um, grow over time. Uh, and among the players we lost during that last level, um, we did see the departure of Chris Mormon. We also saw the departure of Jans Arens. So no more graph tackle tickles, Joe. No more graph tackle tickles and no more uh, like Grafton pump fakes. Every time I see that name, I'm still like, Gra Gra oh, no, it's graph tackle. No offense to graph tackle, who is also awesome. It looks like we also lost uh, Luckbox and I'm the nuts, uh, two yeah. fairly well-known players also. So, man, I was kind of looking forward to it. I was like, man, we can't, we can't lose all the big names between now and the final table. And we haven't, but we have <laughs> lost a bunch of the more well-known ones. We have, but no surprise to see players like Adrian Mateo still going strong 16th in chips right now Tankanza that two-time scoop winner also still in Jareth East yeah. Thomas Mulocker still plenty of big name pros to follow in this tournament and should highlight as well guys that we've got the medium and low events running alongside this now understandably we're focusing on the high which is also the world championship of no limit hold'em but in the medium main event 44 players remaining on the break and in the low 75 and I believe all three tournaments are four-day events, so those will also play down to the final nine tonight. 
They will come back tomorrow and the final table will play down to a winner. Maybe tomorrow there is the possibility that we might see some action from those. But we've been following this from the start of day two. We'll continue to follow this through to its conclusion and see who takes down the title, who wins that trophy, who earns their spot in the WCOOP Hall of Fame and wins that first prize of nearly $1.3 million. The prize money guaranteed right now, 55 k uh, it is time for me to take a break, but I'm not concerned because Joe and Nick are here to guide you through proceedings. He's saying he's not concerned, but he's a, he's a little concerned. Anyway, enjoy yourself, James, as we take a cruise through the Hall of Fame. Player of the series, main event champions, Sean Deeb, front and center. Out $90,000 in lottery. Who do we have left here? 22 players remaining. How many tables is that? Four? Three? Three tables, sir. Is this one all right? What else we got? Okay, all right. Can't, which, which is better? A or B? A or B? <laughs> A or B? Wait, and a C? Oh, this one's full. This one's full. This one has Wushu, Steak Attic, Tankanza. We're going with A. All right. I'd always get that wrong at the Ophthalmologist, too. <laughs> you sure it's A? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's A. They're like, wrong C. I think it's a, I think it's an A. C, it's a D. Okay, sure. Action folding around. Where's all the where's all the good cards in this table? I can't believe we picked this table. There's not there's only one good card here. A queen. <laughs> Just the one thing. Alright, we're getting slightly better here. Pocket Kings for Pappy 7092. Raise, okay, good. I was gonna say raise. I was gonna recommend raise. I don't know about you, Nick, but I like I like to put a raise in with kings. That's usually uh, it's one of my top three choices with kings is raise. Why would you raise, Joe? You haven't even seen the flop yet. Ooh, that's a good point. Bottom pair for Amadi. <laughs> yeah, Poppy here with what will be the best hand quite often. Does opt for a check. Obviously, kind of a dangerous turn. Plenty of random threes that show up in this sort of big blind defend range. Uh, defend range, excuse me. Uh, especially from more competent players who are more confident playing a wider range as a defend. King Deuce does have showdown though, so Amadi just playing it slow. I think at this point, probably. Ooh! Never mind. I was gonna say. <laughs> Whoa, get your puke buckets out. I was gonna say. I think at this point, Amadi's probably thinking, okay, I have showdown, but if he's checking. I'm very rarely going to have the best hand here because so many of the bluffs are just going to bet ace-five-deuce pretty much 100% of the time. And now he can just go big and go for max. And Poppy, having played his hand this slow, might be tempted to just call. He's going to have the best hand a ton, I guess. It's just whether or not Amadi would have a bluff like this when he's been so passive up to this point. You think more of the bluffs would have started bluffing sooner? That's kind of where I'm at, but I would probably still level myself into a call. I mean, it's, you know, it's just one of those. I feel like if Amadi was going to bluff, he probably would lead turn or something like that and then maybe continue river or something like that. I don't know. It's just, it's weird. It's a, it's a tough spot for Kings, and I think he's lost the minimum there, so good on him for that. On a very basic level, and no offense to Poppy, you just think to yourself, well, there's been no... No aggression in this pot. I have kings. Can I really fold something this high up in my range? Right. Uh, no, to a bet. To a bet that, on the surface, is going to mean nothing. Yeah. But and, and then you yeah. go. Okay, it's also one of the best players in the world. So, like, am I really going to fold when this guy is just a known exploit wizard? So. Right. Mm, yeah, I'm hearing you, man. For sure. For sure. Amadi back in action, ace four on the button. Yeah, we might see some uh, might see some interaction here between the ace four and the jack nine. I imagine queen gets out of the way here a lot of the time as one of the shorter stacks. Jack four off, pretty garbage. 
Jack nine, a very defendable hand though when you're facing that button open. Of course it is. Plus when you lose a pot to a player, I find that it's best to continue playing pots in, with them until you get your chips back. You won't we find that it. in a lot of books. But when are you gonna, how else are you supposed you to get your chips your... back unless you, you know, play pots When are them. you going to release your poker book, Joe? It's not so much a book as it is a pamphlet. It's not, it's not super long. I think, I think you could write, write a uh, best-selling poker book if it was sort of like your philosophy on poker. I think that's why I'm going to stick to poker fiction. <laughs> and that way the player in the fiction, a.k.a. me, can be bad at poker. <laughs> <laughs> blind be blind now I think King Jack can go either way I think a limp is fine I think a raise is cool too Puffy does decide to play this one slow Queen 6 in the big blind that is a pretty Pacific flop for Jared Queen Queen 6 that's trip queens and a pair of sixes. Yep. Pacific Ocean right there. And you're just desperately hoping for Poppy to catch up somehow. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's one of those spots where you hit it so hard, you're like, he just can't have anything. There's nothing I'm going to get value from here. Plenty of checkbacks hey. though as well, Jareth does. Jareth, yeah, a little, little bit of value at least. I, you, you could consider at this point that you want to raise to get value from the draws that they might lead here. Some five seven, some hearts. I know it feels bad to raise in these situations, guys, but for the most part, they're just going to have draws, right? They're very rarely going to have a made hand. So I really appreciate the raise here from Jareth. Obviously, it's easy to raise when you've got the effective nuts, but what I'm saying what is draws? that you want to maximize value. Five seven, the hearts. Uh, five deuce might be in there once in a while. Ace. Well, Nick, you just I'm made stretching. an idiot out of me because that raise got <laughs> called by a non-draw. But still, if the if the non-draws are calling you, the draws are definitely calling. Quadzilla, qua 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 queens. Time bank issues. Notwithstanding, overbet. And uh, I mean, this will be, be a hell of a call. That would be spectacularly a wrong. Call. Yeah, it makes the fold. But I like it. You see all, all that extra value he got with the raise, Joe? It's like... I think in those situations, the blockers do kind of become a little bit more real than you'd like to admit, Joe. You go, okay, it's really hard for him to have a queen. He's probably not going to have a six very often, so the only thing I get value from is the draws, and the only time that I get value from them is on the turn when they still have them and they can call the raise and then potentially build a pot for when they do complete, I can get value from the made flush, the made straight as well, where I'm just not going to have a boat that often. So I dig it a lot. I like that play a lot from Jareth. Well played. On the river there, I will say it is a rare exception where I do think that having the queen blocker is most of the time going to prevent your opponent from having a queen. Uh, you know, when there's three on board and you've got one in your hand, it's pretty tough in that <laughs> case for them to have one. Queen with the ace-jack here in the, uh, in the hijack is going to go ahead and open this bad boy up, folding around. Dinge Brinker, probably the only opportunity to come along here, might decide to call against the shorty. Does, and sort of finds a straight draw here. Two live cards as well, although he doesn't know that at the moment. Yang in position. You don't love betting into the big blind here. No, you do not. And does let him get there. Although we say that, I think if he did have a C-bet, it would probably get called quite frequently by Dinge Brinker here. So I don't think that checking and quote-unquote letting him get there really is that applicable in this situation. 
Um, I think the check probably is what you want to be doing here with Ace Jack at this stage of the tournament, Joe. I think you're right, buddy. Two hundred twelve thousand, but a third of the pot. And gets the fold from Ace High. Amadi out. Folding around. Yang likely to be out. Twenty-two players remaining. No immediate pay jump. We've already bumped up. Everyone now guaranteed fifty-five thousand three hundred eighty-nine dollars, and that's going to remain consistent until seventeenth place. Raise and take uh, it for Kazaha. Uh, Joey, I know that you, um, well, for those of you that don't know, Joe won entry into this year's, or next year's, excuse me, uh, WSOP main event. Um, have you started any prep for that, Joe? Oh, and, and that beautiful trophy. Uh, yeah, I've started thinking about how I'm going to spend the $10 million. Been thinking okay. about that a yeah. little bit. You know, just a little bit every day, just an hour or two every day, just sort of thinking about what I'm going to do with that money, who I'm going to, like, f f the people I'm finally going to tell off, the people I'm going to be like, <laughs> oh, oh, well, now that I'm rich, guess what? Guess what? Yeah. You're all about to find out what I really think of you. Top pair for Amadi. <laughs> like, you're, you're at a coffee shop. Oh, oh, John, my old boss, John, I can't. I, so funny running into you here. Oh, I just, it's crazy. How long has it been it's, since you fired me that time? You remember that? That was so crazy. It was such a long time ago. I've basically forgotten about it. Anyway, I'm having this party. It's going to be on my yacht, and you're totally not invited because you fired me that one time. But uh, it's cool. I, I was never upset, and it's so nice to see you and uh, see you around. You're not far off. I was also thinking about how I'm going to pretend <laughs> like I'm going to come back to work. We're like, no, 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 guys, no, 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 I'm coming back to work. And then I'm just going to say the most ridiculous, <laughs> arrogant, <laughs> filthy, horrific things I can say on the air. And just, they're going to have to pull a plug on me. <laughs> uh, Amadi does have a pretty nice hand here, guys, but it's, I don't know if it's going to go anywhere. Sevens might have a, have a, little, have a little flutter here. Yeah, sevens do decide to see a river. Nine of spades. <laughs> By the way, that was a hell of a guess, Nick, because I do have an old boss named John. Who really? uh, is probably one of the people that I would just give. I, I'll, I'll have more arms <laughs> and hands attached to my body so I can give him like 14 middle fingers all at once. <laughs> <laughs> Amadi uh, value betting top pair and Yannick doesn't go for it. Amadi up to 5.3 million now so to answer your question seriously Nick if the company that I work for uh, who's in the business of making poker content wants to make some poker content out of uh the fourth or fifth best poker commentator in the world playing in the main event, uh, then I'll probably do a lot of coaching and studying. You know, maybe we get me and me and you doing some content or me and Spraggy doing some content. Then I'll probably do a, a fair amount of studying uh, because it'll be good for everybody involved. If that's not the case, I, I'm just going to wing it. I'm just going to go have fun. It's a free roll. I'm not saying I'll do no preparation, but I don't want to ruin this experience with work. Ugh. <laughs> but then if you could ruin the experience with work, but then you can lap it up when you got $10 million in your bank account. Do you really think again? the difference between me winning $10 million or not Winning or winning a, a, a much smaller amount is going to be me like looking at charts for 200 hours before I play. 
<laughs> I don't know, Joe. I know the, I, 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 can, I think the money wouldn't change you. I think you'd still be doing the same kind of things. I think, I think you're the kind of person that would just keep living, <laughs> living your, living your, 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 your day to day. You know why it wouldn't change me? Because it would be gone so fast. <laughs> like, it would not be life changing money. It'd be like, well, I like sold all these pieces, so now we're all right. We lose half the taxes. We're down to five million. Then I sold like oh, another thirty percent. Now we're down to like three million. Now it's like, well, I gotta throw a party. That's gonna be a million, right there. So we're down to like $2 million, and once we get rid of student loans, what I owe in my house, like my various car payments, you know, I'm sure that someone will find a way to sue me once they see I have money. It's going to be over. <laughs> yeah, maybe your plan of going on stream and just saying awful things is a bad shot when you've just come into a bunch of wealth and therefore are actually yeah, no, at risk I'll, of being I'll sued just get for sued, large yeah. sums. <laughs> I love that. Pocket man. queens that. for Yannick. Uh, yeah, that's you, right, Armani. You... It would be, it would, it would, it wouldn't be a life changing money. It would be a few hours changing. <laughs> or you would like invest in like a trading card investment, some like really, really big sort of like NFT project or something like that. Yeah, and make it big. I would do something very dumb like open a comedy club, probably. Yeah, I could see that. Guys, would you go to Joe's comedy club? Come on. All right, guys, we have Ace King off in the button for Jareth. I think that's probably the most likely hand to be opened here. Dinge Brinker hasn't been shied away, has not been shying away, excuse me, from uh, from defending that big blind, though, with that big stack. Everybody loves a 10-8 suited or off, and here we go. 8-9-10, Jack. Got a pair of tens on the turn does run down ace king. Ooh, I think I like a bet here from Dinge Brinker. I think leading when you're going to probably have the best hand a lot is really cool here. Really punish the diamonds, really punish the straight draws with the queen. Does decide to check instead. Playing it cool. And now it's two pair on the river for Dinge Brinker on a board. You prefer not to have two pair on. Yep. Yeah. Not the greatest run out in the world for the two pair. Obviously, now any seven, any queen is straight. Maybe a little bluff catch. It's a weird spot. Does decide to go small instead. Kind of more of a blocker bet size. Oh, man. Of... The door is open. I was going to say, Joe, yeah, I think this does open the door for a bluff once in a while. I don't know how often you want to turn Ace King into a uh, bluff in this situation, though. It does fold, though. Not this time. Yeah. And the Growler Jables says I would for Dinge Brinker here. Sorry, Joe. Growler says I would go to Joe's Comedy Club just to buy Hardigan's calendar in the lobby. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> Joe, are you, are, are you down for doing, for doing a sexy charity calendar at some point? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> not really it depends can i be fully clothed the entire time <laughs> i mean sure it can be you know it can be it can just be like a a glamour shot Glam glamour shots by uh, deb a big old re-raise here from dinge brinker attacking this open from kiang Yang, uh, with not enough chips just to call this. This is a clear message from Dinge Brinker. You're going all in or you're folding. Yeah, tough spot for eights. So you feel like you probably want to go for it, but it doesn't feel great. Does get it in. Dominated. Yeah, those eights are crushed down to two outs. And Jack's hold. So there goes Kiang out in 22nd place. Fifty-five thousand three hundred eighty-nine dollars. Tanka says Joe is getting old. Please don't ever get old. Can't imagine poker starter streams without stapes. Jeez. 
I'm not I'm not dead yet. I promise you guys, by the way, <laughs> I will never get old. I'll be long gone right. before I'm old. <laughs> it's like Team America. I promise I will never die. <laughs> that was a good chance I just end up being terrible at this job before that happens, but <laughs> <laughs> Bottom pair for Yannick. <laughs> oh, man. Amadi lets go of the good buddy hand, the old 10 4. Yin's asks, is this the top table? Uh. Sure, like if we were playing online, this would be the one uh, on top, and the other ones are behind it. <laughs> so. <laughs> Sace oh, has joined the table now, balanced things out. Three tables of seven. Sace with the Confirmed. old Jeff Gross avatar. Confirmed top table. Folding around to Amadi with the 8 3 of hearts on the button. Little blind v blind action. Sace here. Decides that he wants to put in a limp with the King Deuce off. I like it a lot. I think this is this is definitely a GTO limp. Pretty GTO shove as well. Has to give that one up to Poppy. Uh, Sir Mixstar says, Joe Stapleton, if you ever reach a final table of a televised event, who would you want to commentate it? Obviously, I would need James Hardigan to commentate it, first of all, because he's the best that's ever done it. The best that's ever called a poker game or a poker hand. Amen. Secondly, it would really make him mad. He would really, <laughs> it would, he would be so annoyed to have to do it. So, and for those two reasons, it's got to be James and only James. <laughs> I mean, Joe, when you look at it that way, I really feel like that might be a better motivation for you to look at some charts, buddy. I like. I feel like. All right. Okay. All right. Sun, now you may be on something. The sun is coming. Something. <laughs> <laughs> Top pair. So, now for the ace queen. Yeah. <laughs> KZHH continuation betting this flop, and uh, getting called by the best hand, turning a better hand. Jareth, oh, spot. wisely the suspicious of this turn card. Maybe not a good river here for Jareth this East. Is a, this is such a payoff river, isn't it, Joe? It's one of those you're like, ah, I can't fold King-10 here. He's, he's not going to have a queen anymore, so he's got to have the Miss Flush draw as Ace-King or something. This is a rough that, situation. That river card is blocking a queen. It's blocking yeah, it there is. being a queen. Even though it's not. Uh oh. Well, it's maybe now we can get away. <laughs> he's giving them, giving them the opportunity. I feel like he's telling a believable story, though, right? Like, you know, overbat turn, really wants to get folds from a 10 if he's got some sort of a misdraw. I, I think he's trying to make it look as desperate as possible, and I think overbatting this river does make it look very polarized, very nothing or, you know, nuts kind of situation. King 10 could absolutely hero call this. He makes Does the call, hero Joe. call. Oh, Jareth my with the hero call. Ooh. The blockers hero aren't fail. Real. Man, oh, man. Blockers aren't real. Sorry, Jareth. That, I'm not going to lie. That sucks. Jareth East out in 20th place. $55,389. Oh. <sighs> Yeah, and then, good call there, and Cajun. KZHH on a rampage up to $37.5 million. Luis Faria second in chips with $21.5 million. So KZHH is $16 million ahead of Luis right now. 
Oh, dear me, Joe. Then there were 19. That is very significant, not only for KZHH, but of course, like we were saying earlier, Joe, on the break, that sort of snowball effect. These good players just amassing huge amounts of chips. It really starves the short stacks and makes them kind of have to play against each other a little bit more and try and vie for a stack that can actually compete at a final table. Uh, Sir Mixstar is asking me the same question, Joe. So the question, guys, for you, those of you just joining us is, if I ever reach the final table of a televised, televised event, who would you want to commentate it? Well, first of all, it would be James Hardigan because he's the best to have ever done it. Uh, I don't imagine it would make him particularly mad to do it, although I'm not sure if Joe might know better than me. <laughs> I think he'd be more pissed nah. off if it was Joe. <laughs> and, of course, Joe Stapleton, the second best to have ever done it. And oh, also nice. because, and also because, like you know, I know that if like, if we went deep, Joe. Well, if we made a final table, we'd party anyway. But Joe is a really good to have around if you wanna, if you wanna get down, you know, if you wanna if you wanna have a party. He's great to have there. He's a great wingman. He's a great, he's great company. So, and we 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 might even get Crazy Cohen, one of our producers, out as well. I imagine he'll join us as well. Keep that in mind if anyone out there ever makes a final table. <laughs> me and nick are good party boys <laughs> and uh yeah that winner's picture i think would be pretty dope as well just get some poor camera guy around and be like all right we want like 15 different poses let's do it the six still good despite two overcards on the turn and river And Dinge Brinker does not have a value betting hand. Maybe a bit of a bluff catcher, but I feel like a bluff maybe could get through, depending on the sizing. And the willingness of Sace to get one out there. Gonna represent the diamonds. And maybe an ace, Half -top maybe bet. a queen. Yeah. I mean, this is pretty tough. This wasn't even top pair on the flop. Talking about fourth pair here. Yep. And Dinge Brinker does let the pair of sixes go. Sace gets away with one. Poppy, ace, seven of clubs. I like a fold from deuces here, Joe. I don't think that's uh, even with 37 mil. It's the effective stack depth is quite low here against the initial opener, and it just doesn't do great. Doesn't play very well, even with uh, even if you can flop a set. Doesn't feel good. Too many players stack behind you, that kind of thing. And not flush Ugh, draw now for Poppy. Are you kidding me? You're saying that with 37 million in chips, I can't set my pocket deuces. Uh, it just—it's so sad when you gotta fold it, right? You might as well just—you might as well just put it in the bin and save yourself a couple big blinds. I will have you know that I have flopped two sets this year, so. You're way ahead. Yeah, that's like a 200% increase from last year. That is exactly what it is. Well, well remembered. <laughs> <laughs> Pappy. Makes it 280 with King Jack, ace five suitor, a little the old sourdough. Sourdough made a comeback last suited. session, it sounds like. Which is artisanal. Uh, three, three, two, four, six, eight, seven. That's nothing. What is anything? It seems like you would have more. Okay, so this guy on YouTube, MCXI, says keyword effective stack, Joe. I'm going to confess something right now. I don't know what that means. <laughs> when someone says effective stack, I assume it means how effective your stack is, and 37 million is pretty effective, IMO. Yes, indeed. For those of you wondering, effective stack 
is an important value. It's basically the amount that you, that one player can win over the other. So if I've got 100 bucks and you've got 20 bucks, the effective stack is only 20 because you can only risk 20 bucks at a time. Therefore, it doesn't matter how stacked I am. I could have a million chips. We are effectively stack depth because we still have to play in relation to the amount that you have. That's the maximum that I can win. So this would be an effective raise here from Sace. <laughs> Highly effective. So far, 50% effective. Amadi. Oh, makes the call. Queen on the turn. 2.6 million in the middle. 3.3 million. The effective stack. Did I do that right? Sorry, Joe. It just means the stack that matters. It means the stack that matters, exactly. And Amadi, buenos dias, Adrian, ace on the river. Flaming berries. Amadi does check the ace five here. Uh, not sure if Sace is going to love that ace. And Sace does go for it. 1.3 million, another half pot river bluff. Worked the last time <laughs> against Dinge Brinker. A lot more difficult to get an ace to fold. Amadi snaps it off and is up to 8.5 million now. Sace is in the base mint. Down to 2 million, second from the bottom. Ye old bluff catch, and I love to see it. Amadi up to 8 million, 8.469, in fact. Pocket jacks, easy shove, less than 20 big ones effective here. We are getting into some pay jumps soon as well, Joe. Don't forget. What are you going to do? You're just going to get it all in. Easy game. He has, he's given it the old, uh, what were we calling it, Joe? The taxi bet? Just leave a little bit for the cab ride home. That's right. A little bit, uh, little, little bit for the bus home, a little bit for the taxi home. So we are at a pay jump, as Nick mentioned. Next player out gets 55389 Make it beyond that, you're guaranteed 67508 So we're talking more than $12,000 difference. Ace with 9-10 in late position. Yep, Sace definitely on the shallow side. I don't know if he wants to get mixed up here. 9-10 off. A little bit on the wider side here as well. 9-10 suited probably always part of that range. 9-10 off probably not even a natural part of that opening range if you're playing for pure chip EV anyway. And Jack-10 suited for sure. Got to play this button. 20-ish big blinds. Just over 20 bigs. I think you min-raise, and you hope that one of the big stacks doesn't just absolutely slam it in your face because that really sucks when you got Jack-10 suited. Yeah. R really, really sucks to raise full to hand like Jack-10 suited. It's one of the dangers um, of having these sort of strong middle-strength hands. You do want to play your button as a min-raise pretty much always, but uh, you are going to be forced to fold hands that will have mountains of equity. You're never quite sure what you're supposed to do if you get jammed on when you got hands like this. And sure enough, going to put in that nice one-quarter pot C-bet. Dinge Brinker should come along with at least a call. Um, there are some circumstances where check raising with bottom pair here actually is appropriate, but it's usually when you have a bigger kicker in many cases. Does call and Deuce. pick up the straight draw on the turn. On the turn, yeah, is a good card for Dinge Brinker. I think a more natural check raise on this flop from the big blind would be some of the gut shots, some of the straight draws. Um, hands like, 
you know, even hands like five deuce or uh, five deuce suited are supposed to defend the big blind at the stack depth, which I know might be surprising to some, but those are good ones. And on the river, two pair now, Trey and a five, but obviously might be concerned about this straight with the ace. I wonder if Poppy is concerned that the float might have contained a six. If he's got three five, for example, he certainly could have a hand like uh, three six. Three six of hearts for sure. Three six of spades, no problem. All those suited combos will be defense here. Are a check and figure it out and a sort of a block bet similar in that spot, or no? Is this always just going to be a check? I I think it's I think it's better to it would be better to have a sort of small block bet where it wasn't an obvious kind of rivered straight with an ace situation, right? You know, if you were. I think you want to avoid doing block bets in situations where if you did have the straight, you'd probably go bigger, right? Because you're not telling a story that adds up. When right. you have a block bet there, you kind of, you could still have a six. You could try and induce or something like that. But I think probably you're more likely to go big because there is such an obvious payoff card. So if your opponent has an ace there pre-flop, bets the flop, and then gets to that river, you would probably go bigger. And that's a more believable story than going for a block bet when it's so obvious that they can just have the straight with the ace. We got all the... Adrian Mateos stands in chat right now, freaking out over these pocket nines. Lots of playable hands still to act, including the chip leader. KZHH is just going to make this a cool mill. And Dinge Brinker. Wow. The ace nine gets sure. two better hands to fold. I like that fold a lot. But, uh, Jeepers. 12K pay jump on the line. Probably has something to do with it. Adrian makes the call, and flop comes eight high, which is just lovely. Yeah, if you're looking for a flop, Joe, with pocket nines, eight trade tray is a pretty damn good one. Uh, I'm so I can't wait to see how he plays this because these are just some of the I I never know what to do in these situations. I just I'm so out of my out of my stack depth here at this point. Literally out of you know, my who stack. Who does depth. know what to do? Yeah, Adrian Mateus. Adrian Mateus. <laughs> I was going to say, I think a check raise is, is what we see a lot from these players. Um, just trying to clean up that equity right now. Just trying to go, okay, where are you at here, brother? Does Casey ever shove as a bluff? It's just be absolutely madness. He does defend. I don't. I don't know that I would see – I don't know. Look, I've watched Adrian play a lot, and I've seen Adrian make some crazy hero calls, sometimes right, sometimes wrong. So getting Adrian off a hand like this is not something I would want really to do. Yeah, absolutely. He just has such a good grasp on what to do in these more sort of abstract you know, situations, you know has a really, really good understanding of what he's supposed to do with nines in a three-bet pot against the button from early position, you know, when the board comes low paired and all that stuff. He just so, so much confidence in um, in the lines there where it can be very easy to kind of psych yourself out, especially if there's like one over card, two over cards, that kind of thing. Very nice hand there for Amadi now up to 11.2 million. Yeah, that's going to move him up the leaderboard quite a bit. He was in the bottom half moments ago that puts him into the top half number nine yeah really interesting to see what happens here as well joe obviously dinge brinker here on the button with ace jack off probably see an open from the ace three suited that's pretty standard um it could be that dinge brinker's action kind of kills what amadi might do but i know that ace nine of spades can be played played very aggressively as a squeeze here potentially if dinge brinker flats might even use it as a cold four bet once in a while if Dinge Brinker puts in a small three bet here. I mean, this would be a really spicy cold four bet. He could just get out of the way as well, though. Again, just defends. And both players pair their kicker. Top pair for Dinge Brinker. Bottom pair for KZ. Yeah, if you're going to defend hands like ace-three suited to three bets, you do need to get sticky in these situations, especially with uh, the sort of meta being that we bet smaller on flops. One of the big benefits of having these smaller bets is, of course, you do keep in some of these some of these smaller pairs, pairs that you can later bluff or get value from in the case where you do actually have a decent hand like ace-jack here. 
Might go small big. It's one of those, Joe. It's a, is it a Sam Grafton small big scenario? It's only one way to find out. I dig it. Dinge Brinker, like yeah, Bringer, yeah, Dinge. Yeah, yeah, there it yeah. is. There it is. Small big. Love to see it. Really, really like this pattern. And setting up a river shove. Wow. Beautiful nice river for Dinge Brinker to get. It's not often you see someone go for three streets with top pair. But I feel like this is the sort of run out that you could actually do it. How many amazing players are just, are just gonna check back here? Not that many. These guys are just so good, Joe. They just, they just always kind of know, they know that they need to go for value in these situations so often. I mean, I wouldn't blame him for checking back. I feel like a lot of players would just play it cautious, all of it. but you know, he does go for all of it here. Max value on the line. And another potential hero fail situation. Bottom pair, no good. KZHH running out of time bank. Five seconds. And we might get an auto full. No, it's a call. Dinge Brinker, not. Excuse me, KZHH, not a believer of Dinge Brinker, and that was huge. What a pot. Full double up for Dinge Brinker, catapulting them into first on the leaderboard. 26 million in chips. KZHH down to 21 million, down to third now. Yeah, Joe, as soon as he makes that bet on the river... And there's a pause. He's like, oh, yes, I've done it. <laughs> I've definitely put in a good value bet here. And, wow, KZH with the very brave call with the trade just goes, uh, just don't give you credit. I don't give you credit on the flop of the turn. I'm not going to give you credit on the river. Look at the flop, Joe. How unbelievable is this? KZH absolutely in a terrible situation. Yannick flopping quads. This could be the biggest pot we've seen thus far. I mean, this is one of those situ <sighs> Okay. That might slow down the Kings a little bit, especially given the fact that he's uh, he's playing this from the button. We'll have some 10x in his range. I was going to say this is one of those situations where you, you, you can misplay quads. Like, you can... You can't lose the pot, obviously, but you can not get the max amount of value. And this 10 on the turn might hurt Yannick a little bit. Yeah, I For think this the sizing, this should get called with two kings. Right, yeah, I think this slows it down a bunch. It, oh. Until, wait a minute. Oh, the, my the goodness. The reverse reverse, the, the triple reverse situation. <laughs> what even is this? <laughs> This is such a what sick run out. Even is this? Oh, you have to raise my. the quad sixes, right? Well, it, uh, because uh, KZ can still have quad tens now. It's this is the weirdest run out I've ever seen. This is, like, this is such an unusual situation to be in. This is so bizarre. I mean, I. I think you're supposed to raise the quads because he, they're going to have kings and aces and queens and jacks and all that stuff, right? Yeah. But if you get it wrong and you run to quad tens, you just hate life. He does make the right play here. Raises it big up to 6.3 million. And will KZ Can make two erroneous hero calls in a row? Back-to-back -back hands oh. does make the call. I'm not going to hit him with the graphic a second time because I feel bad. Back-to-back <laughs> -back hands. KZHH loses around $20 million in chips in consecutive hands. Is now sixth on the leaderboard. Yannick Poker, number two. Dinge Brinker, number one.
Yeah, a couple of really tough pots there, Joe, obviously. Wow. Yeah, really, really savage, especially that second one. That was, uh, I mean, no shade on the ace three call. Honestly, I'm sure KZ has a lot of good reason to be calling down like that, but that one was such a cooler and just such a weird run out as well. There was an opportunity for him to get away when he saw the maybe potential for, you know, tens full, but when it runs out trips on the board like that, you're just going to have the best hand in an overwhelming amount of the time of kings. You have got to be kidding me. That's what I would be thinking if I was KZHH right now. That one feel. That one felt cold. That was a cold one. Amadi getting a little out of line here against Sace. More than happy to call a top pair. Amadi maybe going to slow down now that he's made a pair on the turn. Pretty dry board when Sace calls you. Body does slow down. Who just said KZHH is guaranteed final table unless something dramatic happens? Whoever said that, please don't comment on anything I ever do. Poker or otherwise. Check, check. Sakes takes that one down. Yannick decides really to go ahead and open three-bet whiz kid still in. Yes, 12 and chips. Spooky Richard. <laughs> you banned. <laughs> <laughs> Until he wins 10 million. And then, yeah. <laughs> I'm not so sure. <laughs> Rolling around now, KZHH, 4-5 suit in the small blind. Well spotted, Crazy Carl. Looks like we just lost Boss Dog in 18th place. Everybody's now laddered up. Another $12,000. Everybody guaranteed 67-5 now. So Dinge Brinker does ISO, does raise over the limp of KZHH, who does connect, pair and a backdoor club draw. I think uh, at this stage, definitely want to be sticky on the flop pretty much every time. Don't want to be folding a pair, um, especially, again, like I said, with the meta being a much smaller C-bet continue here from, uh, from good players like Dinge Brinker. Sorry, guys. Was it a three-bet? Two pair. Two pair here for KZ. Maybe we'll get a little bit back since Dingebringer's drawing dead. It wasn't a nice... Oh, all right. Sorry, guys. It was a three-bet pot. Excuse me. Two pair for KZHH. Point four million into four point three. Dinge Brinker don't got a whole lot here. No. Lines going up. Eighty thousand one hundred sixty thousand. Seventeen players remain. Playing down to the final table tonight. So what is that, eight more eliminations? Yeah, we're not far now. Ace queen here for Poppy, looking really shallow at this point. I mean, the thing is, Joe, there's quite a few big stacks behind him to try and bully, so I think... Yeah. 
sometimes if you raise, they'll try and put you in a bad spot there where you do get the action from the ace queen. But on the flip side, I think I prefer the jam. Just they never do what you want them folds. to do. It, I, when I raise there, it just goes call, call, and then I'm like four ways to the flop with ace queen, and it comes jack high. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think winning the chips and denying the equity is probably more important than trying to get action, even if you do think they're going to shove some uh, hands you can dominate there. Um, 17 remain, obviously, getting really close to that final. Ghostied in the chat asking, is the final table tomorrow correct? 6 p.m. UK time back here on Twitch and on our global YouTube as well. We will be following all the action. Nine players remaining. Dinge Brinker with a gut shot does decide to continue, of course. Dinge Brinker. With not a lot of ways to win this hand. Ah, oh, he's going to try to muscle it. He's going to try to get the snake bit KZHH to fold. But I don't know. You'd have to be awfully, awfully snake bit to get away from top pair here. Yeah, Does not. Joe, it is a very strong line from Dinsbrinker. Just trying to rep that nine, basically, right? Just trying to rep the nine at all costs. Does he commit the chest. rest, Joe? What is going on between these two? They must have history, right? Especially with that ace-three call we saw earlier. All right, a check and a check. Both players now. KZHH gets a little bit back. We're down to 16. Musa, 8887, out in 17th place. Two tables of eight. Nick, you want to handle the left side or the right? Uh, I will handle the right. Okay. Uh, Serva raising under the gun. Sace defending. Pair of nines for serve. Okay. Uh, a little bit of ace high for prudently on the right hand side here. 84.4%. Serva bets. Sace folds. <laughs> Check, check, and seven is rivered by Luis Faria. But we're not going to see what happens. Pocket jacks for KZHH. Pocket fours for Sace. Does get away from the crushed hand. Oh, two tables of eight, Joe. Unbelievable scenes we're seeing today. And just looking through, just looking at the players here, so 30, 32,000. We've got about three players that are 20 big blinds or less here, so still considerable shorties, but we have seen some consolidation in the sort of uh, top one, two, three, four, five, six spots or so, maybe top five-ish situations. King seven suited is going to open up here. Yannick again, one of those bigger stacks. In fact, I believe he is still one of our chip leaders, if not the absolute. He is number one right now. King seven suited, lovely hand to open from this earlier position. A lot of these suited kings do fall into this range, especially as you're the big stack. Now facing the all-in from Poppy. Ant one killer does have the best hand. A lot of folks get away from ace queen in these sorts of situations. Not this time. Oh, wow. Wow, that's a really interesting cold call. Yeah. And Yannick does, does the pull hand. the king seven. Domination situation. King I flop. There's a queen out there, though. No club on the turn. Full house for Ant one killer. And we're down to 15. Poppy, 7092, out in 16th place. $67,500. Thank you, chat. You're too kind. I still have a bit of a cold. Sorry about the sneezing and the sniffles. So Yannick not slowing down here, continuing the onslaughts. Opening ace eight. I imagine Dinge Brinker does want to at least call with the queen jack here in the big blind. 
No Both one's players clear. miss. Ace high winning for now. <laughs> Sick Walsh TV. <laughs> <laughs> nice work, Jess. <laughs> that's that's Jess Ellis J. It's not me. Yeah. Yannick does manage to take that one down. There's a nice suited hand in the big blind here. Nice suited hand here for Ant One Killer as well. 8 7 suited, definitely going to want to play that bad boy. I wonder if KZ, being a very aggressive opponent, does decide to at least call here. Does call. I think maybe preferring to 3-bet the offsuit combos actually here, generally speaking, but I don't know this range particularly well. King Jack does come along as well. Big flop for 8-7. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 has a gut shot and top pair and wow. backdoor diamonds. And that's a straight. Four, five, six, seven, eight, straight. Yannick <clears throat> drawing to a chop. Everyone drawing to a chop. One point two million in the middle. Ant going for a little under half pot. And time for KZ to go bye-bye. Oh, no. We're, we're going to muscle this one. I think Poor he's going to struggle to get full Luckily, here, we're going to break after this. <laughs> chance, to, uh, chance to reconnect, recenter, rebalance. I mean, Ant Killer just checks, and then I don't know. I, I don't know if KZ really wants to continue here, but come on, pretty come much on. a zero percent chance a, a Ant Killer ever folds this hand. I mean, come on. I'm not saying KZ can never have seven nine here. It's not completely impossible. There we go. But nope, yeah, checks back. Good check though. Ant One Killer taking down the last pot of the session. Headed for another break. 15 players remain. Yannick Poker out in front. Larice Faria in second. Dinge Breaker in third. KZHH has come back a little bit up into fourth place. Boy, did James Hardigan miss a lot. Buddy, welcome back. Thank you very much, Joe. Yes, that was a very dramatic second session. And really, it was about the rise and, I guess, fall although he's still fourth in chips of KZHH, up to nearly 40 million in chips, and then all of a sudden drops back down to 17 million. Um, now, obviously, Howard Swain, as we already established, couldn't be with us for this mini-series, WCOOP Take 2, which started on Saturday and concludes tomorrow, that sees out the conclusion of WCOOP 2022. Uh, so I've been trying to do my own digging for some stories behind the scenes. Now, Joe, when WCOOP was put on pause, I think we were actually under the false impression that the player of the series contest would be parked and would then resume, as it were, uh, kind of a few days later. So, or rather a month later. But actually, that was all resolved back in September. We mentioned yesterday, Rui Ferreira was way ahead. It was going to be tight to the finish. Benny Glaser was a contender, but it was concluded and we for our one player of the series. I wonder how different it would have been, though, had they kept player of the series open. Because um, Benny Glaser has been winning W Coops left, right and center and is now up to four for this series and 15 overall. I should say 15 Coops overall was tied with NASA for most number of coupe wins and has now surpassed Xiao Vieira to be the most successful coupe player of all time. So 
Just want to take a moment to say congratulations to Benny Glaser. It's, Claps in the chat, guys. I mean, obviously, congrat congratulations to Benny Glaser, but also it's kind of annoying because uh, we got him on the podcast. We got him an interview with him when he had already done some good stuff. I didn't know he wasn't done yet. Like, it would have been better to get him after <laughs> when he was done because we could have said more. We could have done more. We could have cheered him on more. And now it's like, well, we can't get him again. Not right away. Uh, so just, there are still you, some interesting players in the main event who we can potentially try and strong arm into coming on the podcast this week. But true. yes, Hero Value himself, Benny, watching the stream this evening. You're welcome, Benny. Great to see you crushing as ever. Uh, and I want to say thank you to both of you for selecting me as your choice to call the action if you were to make a final table. Joe, <laughs> I, it wouldn't make me mad. I'd be delighted to see you at a final table. I'd be very fair <laughs> and balanced. One thing I guarantee is, you know, sometimes when I'm trying to promote a final table and I'll try and find photos of some of the players who are at that final table to elicit interest. Nick, you know which photo I'd pick of you. <laughs> oh, please. No, no. no, no. <laughs> it will never, never leave me. There are certain things you just can't escape from, I guess. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, and I love the fact, Joe, that you're already counting your chickens and working out how you're going to spend the 10 million when you win the World Series of Poker main event. That's great to see. That's look. That's all the studying I'm going to do is just studying which bills you want to pay off first. <laughs> um, I mean, in theory, there are what seven players to lose, six players yes. to lose rather. Sorry, Pappy, going out in 16th place just before the break. So six players to lose, and we're done for the day. And I keep saying, surely it has to slow down at some point, but it's not. And I just wonder how big, how deep is that average stack going to get um, coming into the final table tomorrow? I mean, one of two things is going to happen, right? Either it will slow down tonight or tomorrow's final table is really going to go the distance, Nick. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I was just saying to Joe just before we went on break that there's sort of three players that are sub-20 big blinds even now, even at this stage. So we are seeing a consolidation um, of some of the bigger stacks. But like I said, they're just on this massive snowball, and they're they're not afraid to play pots. Um, while you were gone, James, we saw some really, really significant hero calls, some really, really savage runouts for some big pairs on, like, triple, you know, tripled boards and stuff like that. In any case, really looking forward to see what's going to happen, and uh, we're almost done. Well, back to the action, and here we go with Table Mateos, plus, of course, Sice, KZHH, and the chip leader, Yannick Poker 1. Second biggest stack right now is start of day chip leader, Luis Faria. He's got 20 million, and then we've got Dinge Brinker playing 19 million. I think things are going to slow down exactly now until we get to the final table. I mean, we might lose one or two more players, but... How many times have we seen 11 and 10 handed poker really just come to a crawl? That would be my prediction if I was going to make one. Yeah, that would make sense as well, of course, because we do have that final table money looming. And if you guys look bottom right, of course, we've had that on, on the screen the entire time. 122K for a final table for an unofficial nine. And that is a pretty significant score, you guys. That's absolutely ginormous for a 10K buy-in at this point. Um, so frequently we see the you know first place, second place, third place being that omega money. But even at this stage, you know, 120x you're buying or something like that is just so so significant. Okay, well Ooh, we've got anti killer opening here with kings. Dinge Brinker with Ace Jack. I mean, this whole this whole day has really thrown off my sort of perspective of all of this, those huge stacks of like 24 million, 37 million. I look at yep. anti-killer with their 16 million. And I'm like, oh, that's not, that's not that many chips. It's so many chips. It's just not as many as uh, KZ had moments ago. Okay. Um, and apologies. I mean, I, I could ask the human calculator, but you know, like most people own a smartphone, so I can actually use a real calculator. So we are currently at, the 8160 blind level and the average stack is 12.6 million that's just shy of 80 big blinds we are playing close to an 80 big blind average right now they are deep and of course 
What's the next blind level? What comes after 8160? I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. 100, 200. Oh no, there's a 9180 blind level in this tournament. <laughs> Fake Sneak blind levels, in. Nick. Fake blind levels. They're just sneaking them in there, James. Sneaking in those fake blind levels just to mess with us. Top pair now for Ant, one killer. Not much help for Yannick. Just has the 9-10 no diamond situation going on. <laughs> yes, Tom, we're skipping 85-170. <laughs> I love the suggestion from Teruli. Could they not just jump a few blind levels to bring the average stack down a bit? Sure. Let's jump a couple of levels. I'm sure all the players will be on board with that. Why don't we just flip a coin? See who wins, guys. Come on. All in, all in flip out. Let's do it. Why not? I, I have... Obviously, often when you see players agree a deal, they are willing to kind of be... play fast and loose with the structure. I think in my experience and joe i don't know whether you remember the super high roller in monte carlo where ola shemi and mustafa Kanik got heads up they did do a deal and they said obviously we, we want to play it out because there's still a set aside there's still the trophy but they said can you make the blind levels like 30 minutes or 20 minutes and we're like yeah sure uh, the most famous example is Toby Lewis and Martin Jakobsen in Villamora, an event which wasn't streamed because you can't have cameras in a portuguese casino um they did a deal, and they basically did say, can you basically just skip forward like four or five blind levels so that we're actually shallower and we can just get this done? But again, it's different when the players ask for it. Uh, I think it, it might happen in circumstances where players might request it, but alas, we as observers can't start, uh, can't start meddling as much as I'd love to. Because there shouldn't be a 9180 blind level. <laughs> it's Queen of Spades going to open up. Yannick Poker again in the, in the driver's seat here. Folds all the way around. Raising to take it. By the way, I noticed that tonight, as we're encountering all these bogus blind levels, Pokerstar's Strag is nowhere to be seen. Hiding. Sice all in with King Queen, called by Dinge Brinker with Ace Nine. Ace high holding, Ace high. That's a straight, that's a wheel. And that's the elimination of Sice. We're switching. Uh, we're down to 14 players. It did not slow down, Joe. As per your prediction, we have seen another bust out, and we've gone over to the other table. Oh, hold on a second. I, I'm wrong all the time. What I mean, what I was saying was that it's going to slow down between now and the final table. Okay, not immediately. <laughs> right. <laughs> Louis here with the three bet, and I take it down. That's right, Hero Value. Somebody in the chat asking who Wushu was. Thomas Mulocker, the one and only Mushu. Uh, Wushu, excuse me. Mushu is a character from Disney's Mulan, I believe. <laughs> and we referenced earlier on that Wushu's had success already uh, in WCube 2022, winning a 5K Turbo PKO many, many, many weeks ago. Oh, just flopping Hello. straight is what we do. Oh, an open-ended for Luis. Flop in straights. A, a five a, on this a, turn. One he does not want to make. Donkulous here. Wow. Okay, no straight for Luis. Does manage to make a pair, though. A whole pair. Oh, we. And if 
value bet of 881,000. And a fold. I see kings fought prudently, and I see... Ooh, sort of suited. Nom, nom, artis artisanal. Nom, 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 nom. Nice. Three bet whiz Happy kid opens to 336,000. Right after you requested that eight, that uh, sourdough action, James, you found it twice, and we got the uh, <laughs> we got the the payoff earlier as well. That was beautiful. We've established two things tonight, Nick. My commentary may be stale, but sourdough suited is still <laughs> very fresh still and fresh. warm. Will we will will we see it again here, James? <laughs> this is another opportunity. Prudently putting in the three bet here, no doubt about it. Will we see the second in a row sourdough stack off? I, I love it. He's get the to a flop with sourdough. Now. I love he's, it. He's sourdough the stack off. Is he the four bet whiz kid? Is the question. <laughs> he's done People his do math. like to he go goes, crazy with the sourdough. I know. We, we we predicted it earlier. Can it happen twice in one show? Can it happen <laughs> twice in one show? Honestly. Yes! Oh, we oh, don't do it! He's done it again! No, yeah, twice in a row! This is artisanal. Snapped Ice off five by the kings. into kings. And kings <laughs> hold gone. sourdough, gonna sourdough, and three bet whiz kid is dispatched, and just like that, we're down to 13! Is this real life, you guys? I, uh, how, God, I swear we didn't More plan like this, sour you guys. don't. Oh, um, man. So, 3-Bet Wizkid is the last player to cash out for 67.5K. There is now another money jump. And now everyone's locked up more than $82,000. Oh, chat. James is like, oh, we haven't seen too much sourdough. And I'm like, yeah, because every time we see it, people are just 4-Bet, 5-Bet jamming it bad. And they're always running into a hand that, that just got them dominated twice in a row. It's the second time. Unbelievable scenes. I really thought Sourdough was going to win that one. You thought Barry was going to make an won. appearance? Were you, were you having visions of the great man in his flapping bathrobe? Only one, only one club on the flop. Like what's? I don't even know what. I don't even know how to process that. Well, two clubs on this flop, and that is the nut flush draw for Bernie. This is kind of funny here from Exodus on YouTube. Bro, whoever the F thought of this ace-five suited four bet is a genius. I bet that person never uses it himself, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's a classic case of do as I say, not as I do, right? Yeah. <laughs> a boom. I can't believe that, you guys. Crazy. Uh, yes. We note the flush for Bernie and Thomas Mulocker now drawing dead. Do you think this is the same Bernie that runs the shot clock? Bernie the Lizard? Yeah. Why not? I mean, it's A all lizard? automated. He doesn't have to work. A Lizard is playing top-tier poker. Yeah. He watches enough of way, it. Way, way crazier than a lizard living inside the shot clock box <laughs> <laughs> during live EPT events. How absurd. No, 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 no. That's cruel, but not impossible. A lizard playing <laughs> online poker, however. Oh, man. Both players now with the club flush. Four of clubs does make the hero call. Bernie the Lizard up to just shy of 10 million chips now. <laughs> well, Bernie has completed. Luis checks. And Queen High is still good on a King King 3 board. It's 
Going to try and take it away right here, right now. Wow, float from the five deuce, and the five deuce does actually improve to two pair on the turn. I do think I really like this float from the five deuce, though. Like, your opponent's going to bet this board with pretty much, well, tons and tons of bluffs and tons of things that you're not ahead of right now, but you have good equity against, and you can also get to fold on later streets as well. Sure enough, finds a really good spot just to bet when he makes the five, but I imagine if he didn't hit the five, still lots of cards where he can still take it away from the queen high. And, uh, yeah, potentially maybe a spot where Bernie should be checking the queen high on that really dry texture, potentially. Nice king raise from Prudently. Stake I don't know what's up. Uh, with ten. I don't know what happened at the other table, but I just saw Ant One Killer jump to the top of the leaderboard, twenty-two and a half million. Oh wow! Well, we'll get back there soon enough. Yeah. Um, Anti Killer and Dinge Brinker pretty much tied for first right now, twenty-two million each. Well, Ace King is now all in, and it's all you can eat for Steak Addict, who does not call. <laughs> oh. Oh, boy. We oh are dear. set up now for the sickest and classicest of all races, as we see prudently open with Queens. And Bernie 21 has Ace King suited. Yeah, it's quite a few bigs, so I expect to see a 3-bet not all in here quite often. There it is. And it's on the bigger side, like I said, because they are on the deeper on the deeper side of effective stack depth here. Effective stack here being about 9.8 million from Bernie's stack. Ooh, oh, wow. It doesn't go all in it pre. Slow. Instead, we go to the flop, which is eight high, so prudently hand. better than a 70% favorite. Oh. And there is the ace on the turn, giving Bernie the advantage. That's right, guys. Always an ace on the disc. Yeah, Queen's got to be hating that ace on the turn, especially when Bernie doesn't put in a continue on the 8-7 deuce. I think a lot of his overpairs would probably just bet turn, bet flop. So he's going to have a ton of ace-king, ace-queen kind of situations here. Potentially a spot where Prudently can actually just get away right now, but it feels so weak to just check fold turn. Oh, it's so rough. If you're going to play so it slow, though, these will happen. Yeah, good fold from the queens, though. Good fold from the queens and there. We are switching. So back to the other table where we can confirm that Anti-Killer, Dinge Brinker, and Yannick Poker all have very similar stacks, all pretty much tight for first right now. And then we can see that Mateos is hovering around the 10 million mark. Yawn. Serve them in. I mean, there's no short stacks at this table. There's so many chips. So many chips in play right now. Okay, Ant Killer now with Kings UTG. Gonna go ahead and raise that one up. Not sure if it gets any action until we see Yon's sevens here. Players are quite deep again. Might be a spot for him just to put in a flat here. I think I like the flat from sevens best. 9-3 suited. Not the craziest come along. You got a pretty good price. You do have a suited hand. 9-3 suited what? doesn't do that great multi-way, but, you know, People are nuts. you can flop some lucky stuff. Yep, does make the call. And King's still good. And another sizable pot could be going in anti-killer's direction which would put some distance between them and Yannick and Dinge. 
8.21 into 1.2. Yeah, pretty sizable bet here. Does Yon feel like he has to come along for one with just, just the overcard? Jack does pair. So seven's obviously still going to be ahead of ace, king, ace, queen, ace, ten, that kind of thing. Maybe even some suited kings that might open here with the bigger stack. King seven suited, king eight suited. Kings do check turn. <clears throat> Interesting spot for Yon now. Potentially maybe a spot, Joe, we were talking about maybe a little blocker bet situation. You get value from some ace, king, ace, queen, maybe some other high cards. And uh, you do also obviously protect from giving your opponent the clear clear uh, value bet with kings to go for like, you know, 2.8 here or something like that. Really, really like this sizing from Yon. I'm, I'm a big fan of this sort of small, small sort of quasi-value, quasi... Ooh! The king's picking up on the bet size, though, and actually going for additional value here. Sevens could absolutely hero call here, especially when Ant Killer checks turn. Oh, boy. Yeah. The hero calls absolutely. have not been working out well lately. No, they have not. We don't need another hero. <laughs> Let no, the don't. sevens go. 20 seconds left to make a decision. Yawn does indeed fold, but Anti-Killer does move up over 23.5 million. <laughs> GBR in the chat saying, can I take that bet back and ask for a check? Sorry, man, I didn't mean, didn't mean that last bet. In some ways, I think that was actually better for him because he can actually get away from the sevens. If he checks, he probably has to call any bet. So it costs him probably a lot more if he doesn't play his hand that way. But the important point is to get away from the um, get, get away from the raise. Oh, so oh, well played, sir. we've got a street flash board. Yikes. This could be such a huge pot. By the way, guys, let's not ruin it and point out that Adrian Mateos folded the seven of spades. Let's just pretend that there's still oh. a chance for some street flash poker. Oh, the set bets. The straight flush draw raises. Dinge Brinker makes the call. Open-ended straight draw now for Anti-Killer. Oh, wow. There we go. Pot really size bet really here. Bad. That's just over pot, right? Um, this is going to get pretty big pretty quick. Yeah, we're going to go full oh, math this no. here, guys. More wow. than 10 what million in the pot. And that seven on the river gives Anti Killer the straight. But. Dinge Brinker, despite having the set, Nick, must be conscious of how straighty this board is now. Yeah, it is very straight. That one card straight has got to be playing in his mind. I don't think he can fold for 4.1, though. Like, I don't know. but I think he's... Oh, yeah. It makes wow. sense. Wow. And anti-killer up over 30 million now and now gets still kings. Wow. This guy is on a roll here. Talking about snowballs, James. This is a very, very cool spot for Ant Killer again. I don't know how much value he gets. KZ, though, definitely somebody who's not going to shy away from playing this big blind with 10 8 suited. Oh, just, just, just top set. Just top no set. No big deal. I'm going to yeah, assume that this not player is using. With this. I'm going to assume that if this player is using the one to substitute for an I in the word killer, Ooh. the same rule applies to the one at the end of anti as well. You think you think Serva Men's mad right now? Oh, wow. Yes. Yes, I do. So instead, it is the straight for KZ, but... 
What's and the straight is wow, good. Wow, so... Jeez. Oh, uh, wow, yeah. Jeez, that's KZ stationing that call on with a hand that I can't comprehend, but it's the best one. Nice. That's right, Welly. They are not an ant murderer. They are against killers. That's my interpretation as well. As we go to the 90, 180,000 blind level. I'm, I'm on the verge of walking out. I mean, this is just, this is just. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the next one's real. Correct. <laughs> Poker News, Poker News front page. James Hardigan walks out on stream as a result of fake blind levels. So Jack's here, guys. With a little starts, a little check, having open pre-flop. Well, this is looking good for several men right now. Uh, Taruli, bearing in mind that we have street flash poker, that has to cover. All straight flushes, including the best of them all, the roll flush. Switching! And checking on our friend the lizard, who's up against Luis Faria, blind v blind. And ace high still good on a king 10 3 flop. Hello, Maria Ho. Welcome to the chat. We've got the Ho this Fun Doodles in the chat. Favorite blind level. Hmm. I think it's <laughs> upset you. <laughs> a little bit of a gutter ball for Luis Faria on the turn. I mean, why don't you just do it again? Why don't you just flex on him one more time, Luis? Stop. You got you to gotta stop letting this guy. You just got to show him who's boss around here. Don't let him put in these little flop bets, you know? There you go. That's the second time he floated with backdoors and the second time he took it away on the turn. Blind be blind. And I love it. I love that kind of play. Prudently here with King Jack off. Might decide to open up. Does make it 378K. Oh, Luis Faria re-raising out of the small blind with ace three of diamonds. Luis just not concerned here, loving life, playing every pot like it's his last. I think this just gets loads of folds, and he does pick it up now up to 20.6 million chips. Seven six suited, prudently opens with. Kaiser Gusto with ten six of hearts. Defends and ten high is ahead. Pretty straightforward see that board, I think, James. Nice and small, doesn't have to be big. Maybe like a little one quarter, one third situation, and you're gonna take it take a lot of the time and sure enough, yep, yeah, seems good. Stake Attic does have a nice hand, however, is very shallow at this point. Not sure that they want to get involved from that far to position. Luis Faria, obviously very aggressive so far. Gonna go ahead and open ace ten like a hundred percent of this time. Hello, Bowie effect in the chat. How's it going, buddy? Very I'm so glad there's Andy actually Wilson. a player called Yawn because when people have been writing their name, I've been banning them. 
Hello, King Five Suited. One of our shorter stacks here at the table, not afraid to turn his hand into a bluff here. I wonder wow. how often Bold. Luis just, just rips this in. I think they definitely could get folds from Ace-10, though, absolutely. Stick it in his eye! <sighs> there it is. There Send him home. I want to see more of this Luis character, man. This is incredible. Absolutely flexing on everybody. Not afraid to get involved in the trenches here. Num num. Num num. Bernie okay, opening GTG. with the snowmans. Num nums. And Stake Addict, who you just referenced, Nick, is on the shortish side right now. Mm -hmm. Has Ace Jack. Are we going to flip a coin? I feel like we're going to flip a coin here. I feel like this is the moment. Seems like a flip pretty it. clear jam spot. Flip Heads it. Up. You have Ace Jack. <laughs> You're going to be crushing this range in many cases. There it is. There we go. All in. Bernie makes the call. Eight's ahead for now. Eight's still good on the flop. And the turn. No help for Stake Addict on the river. That is another KO. And we are down to 12. So we're going to need to move a player over from the other table. So we've got two balanced table, tables rather of six players each. And now it's Luis's turn. Nom, nom. Nom, nom. To have the snowmen's. Now it's going to slow down. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's going to grind to a halt. Once we get rid of Kaj Gisto or they double up, screech to a halt. Luke Jim, who I'm going to guess is called Luke and goes to the gym, asks, is nine the final table? Yes. And that's when play will conclude for the day, when we hit nine, when we're down to a single table, the final table, and then they will return tomorrow to play down to a winner. So here's a hot tip, people. If you write a comment on YouTube and it gets ignored, don't write it on Twitch expecting it to not also be ignored. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Ace 10 raising the take it. But obviously, I appreciate the fact that we get credit for two viewers when it's clearly one person straddling two streams. Uh, prudently! <laughs> nom nom. Nom nom. <laughs> Alright, nom noms once more, prudently. Going to get some action from behind. Dinge Brinker, again, not afraid to defend these sorts of hands in the big blind. Still oh, look who showed up. Pokestar Strag. Here he you is, missed the man himself. My rant about the 9180 blind level. <laughs> Strag getting dragged. Along with the 3570 and the 4590. Fake blind levels. Now, Strag, if you're embarrassed about this, I know that you did recently start working with our very own Robin, and potentially this could be a Robin area, you know what I mean? If you need it to be, this could absolutely be a oh, Robin. Oh, <laughs> I forgot that Wreck-It Robin had jumped ship. Great, I can just I can just shout at him now. Great. <laughs> Yeah, if there's any if there's any pushback, you just go. Yeah, it's, sorry, it's one of our it's one of our new uh, one of our new employees working. He's he, he programmed it wrong. Um, oh, there was a question I did genuinely want to address. It was Goku who said, "Could swear the tables were eight-handed, and you are not incorrect. They are eight-handed. It is an eight-max tournament, but the final table will always play with one extra because otherwise, your final table bubble would be a table of five and a table of four, i.e., two uneven uneven tables, which is not ideal and less than fair." Right. Yeah. It's uh, when you have uneven tables at that stage, guys, it means that your one table is seeing more hands than the other table, and also one one table is paying yeah. lines more frequently than the other, which is very, very bad, especially when there is going to be pay jumps associated with final table and, um, you know, getting chips leading up to that as well, where you've got all that valuable, valuable ICM chips in your stacks. 
And now it's become standard practice in an event that is a certain number of players max to have plus one at the final table. But it wasn't beforehand. I know I've told this story before, but I can't remember if you were there, Nick. Uh, there was a six max event at a London casino, which happens to be located above a branch of Argos. And when they got down to seven players, instead of making that the final table, because it was advertised as six max, they did run a table of three and a table of four, but every orbit they would balance and move one player over to the other table so that each table got to take it in turns with being the four-handed table versus three-handed table. It was a mess. That's awful. No, that's not the solution, is it? I mean, you know, it's got to be dynamic. You know, you got to be on the fly. You got to be willing to make some changes here. Uh, we do see a uh, continuation here from Ace Jack. Sorry, a bet from Ace Jack on the 6 9 Jack board. Luis Faria, though, of course, with the gut shot sticking around. I think I continue again. Again, this is a pattern we see with so many good players now, guys. Smaller bet on the flop, much larger bet on the turn. Very, very punishing. We saw that from Sam Grafton. We've seen that from a lot of the players here as we got down to the final sort of 15 or so. And it's just, uh, it's just a very, very cool sort of meta that's happening at the moment and very heavily rooted in sort of a more GTO uh, betting yeah. pattern. Uh, talking of Sam Grafton, great to see Bernie honoring the squid by having a picture of Sam as his avatar. <laughs> and Thomas Mulocker has opened under the gun with Queen 10, prudently with King 10 suited on the button. Mr. Fitty says we saw Grafton and Tonka doing a lot of 10% bet on the turn quite a lot too. Yeah, they got they got all the they got all the sizes there, you guys. They're definitely putting in the work with the uh, with the betting patterns. You'd love to see it. I'm so sick of this Tonka. <laughs> Benny says I just shared a two-hour taxi with Grafton. Lol. The last time I shared a taxi with Sam, he was in no condition to communicate. 10-9 <laughs> suited for Gusto. And Sam is a prolific communicator, so... <laughs> Not after the last night in Monte Carlo, he wasn't. Uh, oh, Spades! Uh, Gusto, by the way, with the Grafton. 10-9 suited and with the best hand right now. And the best draw. Okay, nice small bet here. All the sickos calling for the eight of spades on the turn. Instead, it's the king of clubs. Boring! Mm, seems like a decent turn to continue, right? King is an over card to the board. There Let's we go. Let's decide to check Less instead, boring. but there's the spades. <clears throat> Flaming Barry on the river. Does Wushu ever have a bluff here? Probably not. I don't know. It's not. It's kind of a weird run out, right? A lot of the ace combos, or some ace combos at least, might bet flop here and then check turn. Obviously getting there on the river. I don't think this is quite the spade run out you want to try and rep. Even yeah, if what do you think you're going to get fold here? Yeah, exactly, right. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's a bluff at this point, especially given the fact that it's an ace of spades as opposed to, you know, maybe perhaps the three of spades might have given him an opportunity to go ahead and, go, go ahead and have a stab at it. I don't know if Kaj Gista would ever miss a bet with a king, for example, so I don't think you're going to run into a pair of kings that often if you do have a bluff, but ace of spades, obviously not fantastic for the bluff. I think maybe we just make the final table 12 hand and wrap this up now. 
We got the cards. Wushu versus Dinge Brinker going to the flop and a pair of tens versus a pair of sevens. Tough spot, blind v blind here, James. Obviously, both players are going to be pretty confident they have the best hand here quite often, at least on the flop. In fact, with Wushu checking flop, Dinge Brinker might be tempted to try and, you know, put some chips in now and protect for some overcards. I don't blame him. Goes for about one-third. Wushu check calls. Smiley Chops asking what money is guaranteed for 12th. Uh, $82,277. And then, once we get to 11th, that's when we start paying out the six-figure scores. Once there are 11 players remaining, everyone will be guaranteed more than 100 grand. A check and a check. Wushu probably confident he has a value hand at this point, so probably will go for a value bet. There it is, 641K into 855. Makes the call with go. a 7, of course, and nice little pot for Wushu. And we are switching to the other table where it is Yawn versus uh -oh. KZ. And Yawn has been outflopped here. Top pair for KZ. Don't say, but Yawn. Yawn oh, don't say it. Doing the betting. Oh, Joe, you almost got me there. Whoa. <laughs> Triggered. And notice that Adrian Mateos is now on the shorter side right now with seven and a half million. Not short stacked, but is actually second from the bottom on the leaderboard. I mean, with a big blind of 180,000, who can really say what that is? <laughs> yeah, come back to me in 13 minutes when we start playing proper blind levels again. Proper poker. Oh, serve them in. Ooh, sourdough suited. Mm -hmm. Tis artisanal. Serve it up some sourdough. <laughs> An opportunity, guys. Here's the opportunity. <laughs> Let's go. Will we see? I will mean, we see the four bet? <laughs> three this occasion, in a row? on this occasion, <laughs> blasting off with Ace Five would be correct. See, you can't play it correctly. Either you run it into Kings or you fold to a worse Ace. You either get it in against Kings or you fold the best hand. Yep, exactly. That's the way you do it. It's just. The, it's just. Yep. Blame the solvers. That's how you do it. So KZ shot. hovering around the 22 million marker. We can clearly see that Anti-Killer has retained the chip lead. Number one right now with a stack of 33 million. Anti-Killer playing from Kyrgyzstan. I don't want to derail too much, but Crazy Carl's right. The $2 billion Powerball ticket was sold like 15 miles from my house. At a place Did you called buy Joe's Service ticket? Center. I did not. I did not go to Joe's service center. Oh, I almost picked those numbers, though. <laughs> this is fun. This is a fun board here. 
Yeah, a little bit of something for everybody. Still with Everybody's the best hand. Everything. Right nom 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 nom. I think I'd rather have Queen Ten here, guys. What do you think? Of all the hands on this texture, I think I like Queen Ten the best. Even though it's not actually a made hand just yet. Yeah, I, I kind of have to say, if there's a place near you, Joe, called Joe's Service Center, that is exactly where you should be getting your tickets from. Yep. It's it's very, very, I mean, look, it's in the scale of the world close to me, but not close in <laughs> L.A. standards. But it's called Joe's Service Center. It's an omen. Is anything ever really close in L.A.? I no. guess in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter where you buy the ticket from. It's more about what numbers you chose. I mean, it depends how, uh, how superstitious you are. Queen 10 still the best hand on the river for Yawn. It's a 40 minute, it's 30 miles from here. It's a 40 minute drive. Yeah. Everything in LA is like just far enough that you need to drive an annoying amount and the traffic's always just bad enough to make it agonizing that's my limited experience of LA at least I don't know Joe maybe you have a different different opinion nope that's accurate <laughs> um, my dad was living in um, Riverside for for some time and he's like, yeah, if you want to go into town, it's only like, you know, it's only like an hour or two or something like that. He goes, but if it's like traffic's bad, it's like nine hours. <laughs> it's not Yeah, necessary. Riverside to LA can get pretty murky. Is, I was going to say, thought for a second Anti-Killer was seriously considering calling that. With a seven. Um, Uh-oh. Mateos with ace queen, Servlamin with ace king. Adrian Mateos potentially could be at risk for this tournament life. There is the three back from Servla Men, and let's see how Mateos responds. Against a really good player, I don't know if he can fold this because he's just going to get exploited so often by the in position player. He's all in. And Servla Men makes the call. It's a domination situation, but it's a queen high flop. Clubs, though, clubs are a factor. No club on the river. And Mateos gets lucky to double up through Servla Men. We're switching to the other table. Mateos now up to nearly 15 million and back in contention. Wow. Adrian Mateos running really good to get the rotation there, guys. That little three bet does work. Just seeing our guy Luis Faria here really flexing in these three-bet pots. Picking his spots really well. Just picking up a lot of money at non-showdown. We'd love to see that. I mean, I'm looking in the lobby right now, and obviously I have to root for two players. Both representing the United Kingdom. Serve Lemin and Adrian Mateos. There is no finer example of a UK poker pro than Adrian <laughs> Mateos. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> I mean, he's Hammersmith's finest. He's Jack flopping best here. Top pair, top kicker. Oh, it has two pair. 10-9 has no prayer.
Wushu might be tempted to uh, to rep that ace, though. Yeah, it's going to fire again. About 60% pot, something in that region. Johnny Fingers pointing out that Tonka is a Brit as well now. The difference being that Tonka has to live in Spraggy's bathroom, whereas Mateos <laughs> is the crown prince of the Casa del Glory in Hammersmith. As prudently moves up to 22 million. So, Geisto, the short stack here, with 2.7 million at the start of this hand, has ace-6 suited. Let's see what Dinge Brinker does with the Spraggy. Ace-7 offsuit. Raises to 360. Yeah, ace-6 of hearts here is a tough one. Might be tempted just to shove. He does put the money in. Well, it would get the fold from ace-7. I don't think it's getting a fold from ace-queen. Yeah, it might be a spot where... Let me think about this. Does Prudently ever just flat here? And just kind of see what Dinge Brinker's going to do behind? Or is it one where he tries to ISO? Yeah, I think I prefer the flat. I do approve of this. You keep the other guy pretty there honest here. And that will be a KO taking us down to 11. Switching back to the other table. One more elimination, guys. We are going to be hand for hand. One more KO, and we're on the final table bubble. And we've got ace, queen versus queens here. That looked like another rough hand for KZ, by the way. Turn the straight. Got four. Sorry, turn the flush. Got four flush. <laughs> Flop the flush. Got four flush on the turn. There we go. Get the words out. <laughs> Might be a good spot for him here, though, Joe. Queen's very much dominating ace-queen, the initial opener here. <laughs> Strike says, what a great structure. Oh, man, I love it. Harum decide to call here pre-flop. <laughs> it's an excellent needle. <laughs> well, KZ, huge favorite here, bet 621,000 into 3.1 million. Serve them in just ace high with no real draws. Yeah, it is an Incredibly small bet, so might be tempted to just come along for one more and see what his opponent does. I mean, his opponent will just have bluffs that actually connect with his board, though, as well, right? It's not even a, you know, I can appreciate why he's coming along for the call for sure, but it's also one of those situations where, oh, come on. Ah, it's okay. I'll just back Oh, yikes. Right I'm and actually, actually starting to feel out. sorry for KZHH now. I mean, this yeah. is just... This is unbelievable here. Seriously unbelievable run out. And you've got the blockers that aren't real, Joe. Not this is real. so sick. This is so sick. This is unbelievably sick. This is like this is probably the worst one we've so, seen all day today, guys. Can you ever just call here with the so called sucker straight? No, you can't because you've got queens. How can your opponent you have ace queen here? Exactly, and, and now Ace Queen is loving life, James. Uh, you think? You have to oh, check your hands so many times when this happens. It's it's the absolute dream. And this is likely to be a full double up for Serve Lemin. That's assuming KZ makes the call. I don't see how you don't make this call. This would be an amazing fold. Servlet Min gets the double up to nearly 22 million as KZ drops down to 8 million. Oh, that is the worst one we've seen all day today, guys. And we've seen some really, really bad ones. And so many of them involving KZH, as you've already mentioned, guys. It's just, oh, savagery. Still in the game, though. Still got chips, buddy. Keep the faith. Yeah. I mean, I have to say, I really like the way there that it clearly favored the bigger stack. Oh, it didn't. 
<laughs> Ace King for Yannick Poker. Yes, Johnny Fingers, of course, is also a 10K buy in. Here we go. That's what I'm talking about. 100,000, 200,000. We're all on board with this blind level, and everyone can calculate how many big blinds everyone has, which makes me very happy. And we're going on break. Finally. <laughs> for a fire it's going to open up here on the button anti-killer going to put in a three bet here with the ace 10 off well let's just check if plays concluded at the other table as we are switching once again it is Bernie versus Dinge Brinker. Bernie with the advantage. Bernie has a lock on it. <laughs> Nine ninety. The river bat from Dinge Brinker. <laughs> Bernie, do you have the hero? Makes the fold. So with play concluding at both tables, we are going to take the next break. And we have got three hours, 25 minutes into play. We are already down to the final 11. I don't quite know how this has happened. It's been going extraordinarily fast. The average stack is ridiculously deep, and there are some players with more chips than they know what to do with, including Anti-Killer, who currently leads the field with 34.6 million. Time for us to break out the quad box once again as we welcome Griffin Benger into the mix. Hello, Griffin, you mythical beast. How are you? I am very well. I can't believe you guys started without me. 11 left? Come on. I know. Well, you could have joined us earlier, but I understand you were having internet issues. Uh, yeah, a little bit. I, I, I kicked out the cable, and then I, I didn't really know what I was doing, but right in the nick of time, I'm here. Okay, here's a tip for the future. When you kick out the cable, Griffin, you plug it back in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, it's that simple. Uh, it's just a lot of buttons, and then you're getting these different errors, and you're looking up what the errors mean, and... <laughs> You know, that is a very generous interpretation of internet <laughs> issues. Griffin kicked out the cable. I mean, those two I, I mean, things Kiki aren't really the I, same I, thing. Yeah, it's like well, if I, I'm having stomach issues today. It's like if I, if I had stomach issues because I drank an entire bottle of tequila. It's not really stomach issues. It's because I drank an entire <laughs> bottle of tequila. It's, Oh, so now the truth point, emerges. Point. You've been knocking back yeah, the tequila exactly. after hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Griffin, uh, obviously last saw you in London for the EPT. How was your journey home? All good? Yeah, it was very, very good. I had a great time in London. It's nice to be back home. I actually popped over to Philadelphia for, for just one one day, really, to see a, a World Series game, which was really cool. My, my buddy got me a sweet ticket there, so that was really a cool experience to be a part of. Oh, who was playing? Uh, Philadelphia versus Houston. So I saw game three, which was the big home run derby, basically, for the Phillies. There was like five home runs. It was really exciting. The place was buzzing. And then they lost all the rest of the games afterwards. So I saw all the good oh. stuff in Philly, you know, the height of their excitement, all to, for it to be crushed uh, within the next five days. Yeah, I haven't been following uh, the, the baseball season this year, so I didn't oh, know really? how, how it was going. No, <laughs> I, I kind of... I, Sacrilege, I've not really been following NFL this season either. Just got too much other stuff going on. Like all these poker streams. W Coop started in September. We're in November and it's still going on. Um, still going. So <laughs> what else have you been up to, up to Griff? Uh, yeah, not too much. I, I popped over there and I've been uh, back here getting back on the ice in the Canadian way. It's starting to get cold, there, they've, but they've been keeping the, the golf courses open later than usual. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just warmer around the world for some reason. 
So, now, uh, so I got to play golf a little in November, which is very rare here in Canada. I don't know if you're aware of this, but your name appeared in a news story on the Pokestars blog the other day. Are you aware? Uh, I don't think so, but remind me just in case. Maybe I... So it's been confirmed that Pokestars is going to be co-sponsor of next year's Irish Open. And it was just oh. referenced that Pokestars commentator Griffin Benger, along with players like Steve O'Dwyer, is a former Irish Open champion. So, yeah, we will have an official association with uh, one of the most popular poker tournaments in Europe next year. Really the most most popular and amazing and all the best winners. It's just the best. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're sounding vaguely Trumpian right now. Uh, let's not forget you're also an EPT High Roller champion and a Shark Cage yes, winner. Let's, yes, have, let's yes. have some love for our own stuff as well. Uh, I mean, I think it's too early to say at this point in time what our involvement might be. Obviously, great to see stars involved in the Irish Open. And I guess probably too early for you to commit as to whether you would go back and try and win it a second time. Yeah, I mean, that's why I was doing the whole thing about how great it was. I thought you were, like, interviewing me for the, for the re representative. I'm down. I love Ireland. I love the Irish Open. Let's go. Okay, well, maybe we can make that happen. Maybe we can be a part of it. Uh, this is the point in time, Nick, when we bid you adieu. Uh, just remind everyone of your next stream on the Pokestars Twitch channel. Uh, I, I was actually going to try and stream tomorrow and for the rest of this week as my normal schedule, but I've been requested to not stream because we do have a bunch of conflicting things that sort of came up last minute. Obviously, tomorrow, when I would have normally streamed, we're going to have that replay with Pi, of course. Uh, yes. On Thursday, I can actually stream. Then on Friday, they, there's going to be something else that they... I think there's also a server restart on Thursday as well, which was also conflicting. But basically, I'll probably be back uh, sometime next week. If you guys keep an, keep an eye on me on my social media, I'll let you guys know when it's going to happen. Thank you, Nick. Ever have one of those moments where you regret asking a question? Uh, thank you very much for being part <laughs> of LWQ 2022 coverage. <laughs> Nick is going to be streaming at some point in the future. There you go. That's all you need to know. Oh, my favorite player, Adrian Mateus. Just always doing it. Always going deep. So... Joseph Stapleton is on break right now. I get to spend some quality time with my good buddy Griffin. You love to hear it. Bodes well for any chopped pots in the future. By the way, the stream tomorrow that uh, Nick was referencing um, is the replay of the PLO main event, the World Championship of Potlim at Omaha. That is playing tonight. Been deliberately avoiding it. Don't want any spoilers in case you want to watch the stream tomorrow, but it will be a cards up replay of that PLO event tomorrow afternoon in the hours leading up to our live stream of the final table of this tournament. Nine players will return for the final day. And even though I've enjoyed all the drama, Griffin, I've enjoyed the fact that it's been moving at a quick pace, part of me does want us to play through a couple of levels without any eliminations, because otherwise tomorrow's final table could be brutally long. Yeah, I mean, uh, good good for you. I mean, it's, pr it's pretty late at night there as well, though, James. You sure you don't want to have a little nice early finish? Tuck oh, in. Just, just to be clear, in an hour's time, I'm going to be peace out, and I'm going to hand over oh, to the North go. American oh, Brigade. Okay, so it's going to be, okay, oh, it's so going to be Stapleton us, and Benjamin. You want us to be going all night. Okay. Yeah, okay, exactly. Okay, it's, it's, I'm all right, Jack. This is not about me. This is, this is for the greater good of poker. Speaking of poker, Yannick Poker with the best of it here, but getting a little resistance from Jan. Jan versus Yanni. And Yannick Poker back up to around 20 million. So average stack right now, Griffin, 17.2 million. Well, so short still stack pretty tournament. Deep. <laughs> Only 80 bigs? Just 80.
serve them in with one of those why not flick it in or a hundred big blinds deep kind of hands. Flop a little equity here. But not much. Yannick with the best hand right now, but Servlet Min has just turned an open-ended straight draw. Yeah, and there are some avenues here where Serv is going to have a good opportunity, I think, to find a bluff against Yannick. Um, because once this is played as a check back and Yannick doesn't improve to Broadway or, you know, aces up or trip tens, now you're sitting there with third pair and... You know, serve is going to have a lot of those queen nine type hands, king nine, um, losing to any jack, but gives up and doesn't take the stab. And I think he's going to be pretty disappointed to find themselves up against just a 10 that is going to probably find a decent amount of folds on this run out. Very surprising bet here from Yannick, but... I don't think that they would be trying to fold out a jack. So this might just be a very, very thin value bet. And it's actually opened up the door. <laughs> James, this is some advanced wow. stuff here. You, what, geez, I just got here. Relax. Okay. Servla Min up to 23 million. That means Servla Min is now fourth in chips behind Luis Faria, prudently, and Anti Killer, who's still the chip leader with 34 million at the start of this hand. In the big blind, and has Servla Min dominated here? Queen 6 versus 6 3. Yeah, fair question here on Twitch from Resin. Weird bluff, though, because he almost never has the nuts right. Well, the thing about that situation is. You know, Yannick Poker shouldn't ever really have the nuts either. Uh, would have continued with Ace-King on the turn there, almost always unblocking all the pairs and the 8-9. So, you know, that makes it so that Serve Lemin does have and can correctly check-raise the 8-9 and not just the King-9 and Ace-King. Question on YouTube from Ryan. Are we getting Maria today or have I missed her already? No Maria today. Maria back on Wednesday for the final table. So... I think Maria's kicking off the broadcast tomorrow, and then you're joining midway through, Griffin. Is that right? You know what? I haven't checked the schedule tomorrow. I've just marked my entire day for Poker Stars. Oh, and bless I just you. Wake up and see where I am. <laughs> so we have now reached the six-figure payouts with 11 players remaining 100k guaranteed and that is the payout for both 11th and 10th those will be the last two payouts tonight with nine players set to return for the final day down to 17 in the medium buy-in main event down to 27 in the low both those tournaments playing down to the ft today as well The guard says, no show without ho, just saying. Well, I hate to break it to you, but this is a show. You may not find it as enjoyable, as entertaining, as worth watching, but it is happening. The show must go on, to quote a more common entertainment industry cliche. Yeah, Vigard, and you're kind of still here. I doubt you just came in to drop that comment and bounce. So it's clearly a show that you're digging. And we're just the poor man's host to you, and that's it. We're here, we're doing it. And are we going with Ant Killer or Anti Killer? Did we decide Ant One? It's Anti Killer, Griffin. Okay, Anti Killer. Um, uh, babe, giving up as here. I said, if, if, you, if you accept that the one in the word killer is substituting an I for a one, then you have to apply the same rule to the first half of the name as well. I don't have to get all logical about it. It's just a question. 
Sorry for bringing logic into the conversation. Oh, hello, Ace King versus Jax. Yeah, and a stack depth that at six-handed, you know, I don't think you want to make a habit of getting in Jax for, you know, 75 big blinds in general. But when you're playing six-handed on a final table bubble and you're being three-bet from the chip leader on the button, I don't know. Maybe Amadi does want to play this as a four-bet get-in for 75 bigs as opposed to, you know, just maybe a more cautious call here. I would love to be I in mean, the mind of Adrian Mateos here because, you know, maybe he feels that there's such an edge to him not getting in a big preflop all-in. Um, we're talking about a player here, Griffin, who is a very accomplished post-flop player, happy to play through the yeah. streets, especially when you can just flop a set like that. Yeah, very very well put, James. I don't think that um, Amadi is going to allow himself to get coolered for this amount of chips um, and instead just play the streets very under-repped. You know, this is the best hand that Amadi can possibly have flatting, yeah. so it's nice to be at the top of your range going to a flop too, right? Queens plus would be getting in. Ooh, so obviously Anti-Killer had the straight draw on the flop. Now has the nut flush draw on the turn. Amadi has a club himself. He's a 3-1 to one favorite here with the set of jacks and improves to a full house on the river. So yeah, good discipline there from Anti-Killer, uh, I think, you know. Yeah. Sometimes you think, you know, you're bluffing, you're c-betting, you're picking up all this extra equity, but you know your opponent's range is kind of all over this board. Probably not going to get a fold, so. This pot is going to go to Adrian Mateos. Representing the United Kingdom, a player with close to $9 million in PokerStars earnings. Won the 25K Super High Roller in the 2020 WCOOP series. And, of course, won the Super High Roller at EPT Monte Carlo earlier this year. But the only two tournaments he's ever won. Yeah, hasn't won anything else. <laughs> okay, unless you have it right in front of me and you can just tell me and, and you say that we're not going to play the game, but where in the all-time money rankings do you think Adrian Mateos is? Live That's a really good earnings. question. I mean, I know guess. his live earnings because they're written down in front of me. They're just shy of okay. 30 million. So he's that, that's got to put him in the... I don't know. I don't even know what the rankings are right now. All those million-dollar buy-in events have really distorted the numbers. I would say with a number like 30 million, he's got to be like... Easily top 50, more likely top 30 kind of thing. Is that reasonable? I would say top 20, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what do we do? Adrian, Mateus, uh, and then... Okay, all-time money list, 16th. Would you look at that? Yeah, I would, would have thought inside the top 20. That? Tens, it's still the best hand. Everyone now has a pair, though. Yeah, and were this heads up, I think Mateus uh, would consider calling here on that flop, but definitely not three-handed. And the Johnnies find their way back to him. Does indeed have jacks again. And just to clarify, guys, obviously we are acutely aware of the fact that Adrian Mateos is a Spanish player, but you have to understand that how online poker works is where your account is registered, where you play from, counts as your nationality when it comes to WCOOP. So Adrian Mateos is based in the UK. He's registered as a UK player. If he were to win this, it would count as a win for the UK. That's how it works. And I, for one, am very grateful because we need all the help we can get in this country. 
That was, by the way, just a general observation. It wasn't about a lack of natural-born poker talent. We've got plenty of that. I was just saying, we need a lot of help in this country. <laughs> what he's trying to say is he's not trying to steal Adrian Mateos from you. <laughs> it's just the rules of poker stars. He's still yours, but, you know, the UK needs him. <laughs> So May Dude says, what is Adrian Mateos' username on PokerStars? I think it's Amadi underscore 017. Have I remembered that correctly? You nailed it. I don't know how you did it. And Yannick Poker, fresh off that very thin value bet that got exposed from serve. Now sitting here facing a 5x 3-bet in position, 80 big blinds deep with the beautiful ace-10 suited. You know, I don't think you're expecting to be up against a huge bluff range here, but it's a hand that, that flops so well, you want to see three. Oh, Gase Rass, you've missed so much. Man, last time I watched, KZHH had 37 million. How the tables have turned. Oh, yeah. It has been a very dramatic day for KZHH. He got straightened right out. Simon says, you guys going to Bahamas. That is the plan. I don't have a flight yet, but I've seen several emails about it arrive on my phone while we've been broadcasting this evening. KZHH should get some back here with this king-queen three bet. the blinds yeah I think this is the kind of combination that Amadi is going to work in some raises with you know hands that are objectively bad but can have a little bit of playability with their suited nature um, but when Yannick plays that as a limp raise, which I think is a really tricky way to play the ace-8, um, it's going to get it done. Jack and ace three in the blinds here, and Mateos with queen ten on the button. Yeah, there should be a conflict here between Amadi and. Don't do that. Don't do that. No? Sorry. Jeez. It's <laughs> nearly 10 o'clock in the evening. Overdone? I've worked a full day. You're just going <laughs> to oh, make it very, huh? very difficult. And coming in with the three bet is. <laughs> I won't do it anymore. Amadi, not going to be dissuaded and is going to open up this ace five. Six versus six three. And I think we may have reached that section of the game where things are going to slow down for a bit. Everyone just has so many chips.
rewatched Signs last night. I like that movie. Seen okay. Signs? M. Night Shyamalan? Yeah, 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 no. Yeah. That's the one with, with Mel Gibson, right? Yeah! Whatever happened yeah, to that guy? <laughs> yeah, let's, let's not. <laughs> and Joaquin Phoenix? And the little girl from Little Miss Sunshine. See any good movies lately, James? I mean, you're the one that said it's going to slow, slow down. We may as well catch up. No, I'm watching a lot of TV, but not many movies. Um, White Lotus? I'm going to wait for it to finish so that I can then just binge this season. Oh, I hate Lotus. watching TV week to week. Hate it. I'm doing that with uh, Andor, Andor because it's so good. Ooh, nice. But there are so other very. So you watched a couple episodes of Andor, and now you're letting it run its I course. mean, and I, 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 no, Andor I, I watch every week because it's that good. Oh, but okay. most it's TV, much, yeah. I would rather just wait for the season to finish and then just 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 blow through it. That's what I've do, that's what I'm doing with um, uh, the Game of Thrones, uh, House of the Dragon. We talked House about last Dragon. night. I just waited for the season to finish, and now I'm kind of already up to episode eight. Very much enjoying it. Yeah, it's great. But yes, Birdman, I agree. Andor is awesome. It's the Star Wars series I think all of the adult fans have been waiting for for a long time. See, would you look at that? Andy F.F. F. Gibbons with some signs, fun facts. Mark Ruffalo was originally cast but had to drop out due to scheduling conflicts. See, isn't that huh. great? I, I thought my, me bringing up signs was a total dud. But look, look at that. Some interaction. Every movie has a hashtag fun fact attached to it. Actually, that's not true. <laughs> A lot of movies have a hashtag fun fact attached to them. What a silly and little hand happening right now. Yeah. Um, oh. Is Yannick considering making the call? Oh, wow. That's, that's... Okay. So this is incredible. Basically, <laughs> Yannick is doing what Servleman did earlier with the Ace Queen to Queens. Making that small bet oh, beautiful. Oh, to induce a value trips. raise to make a shove that can't be called by... Because, you know, your, your range is capped when you check back the 5-4 on the turn there when there's three hearts. You should never have a flush. So, facing a min bet on the river, if you raise, you either have bluffs or a 5. And you kind of have to fold all of that facing a shove for another 10 million. So, this is why we come to watch the, ten, the 10k... World Championship uh, of, of, of online poker. It's amazing. Awesome. Oh, Marty going to be kicking himself when he sees that one. Well, he's just actually seen it in real time. He's probably kicking himself right now. And it's just amazing watching these players find new ways to create more bets in situations. You know, if Yannick had bet a sort of bluffier amount there, might have just been called by the 5-4. Maybe, you know, but instead bets this tiny amount to get called by, you know, the 9x or whatever, the pairs, and just lose two, one big blind. And then if you get raised, know your opponent not only shouldn't have a flush, but also won't have a boat and can't call another 10 million. It's just awesome. Seven on the river. And a pair of aces good for serve luck men. I am UV asking where is Yannick from? Wait, can I can I take this one, James? You just hover your mouse over their name, and you'll see it. Ha <laughs> ha! Gotcha. You're very funny. <laughs> Österreich, Austria. 
Nice. Okay, we got tens, we got fives, we got sevens, we got ace queen. Let's have some action. Yeah, playing about 47 big blinds from the small here with the tens. Um, and an opportunity to squeeze over these two very active, big chipped up players. I think that Jan is going to have to play this. Um, does actually instead just call, and this might just be sort of an, an ICM consideration thing, not really wanting to even get in these 50 big blinds, staying under rep. And there's a setup for set! James, you called it. Set over set, always coming set, Vins. Always coming set, Vin. There's something there, James. <laughs> there isn't, but thank you for trying. <laughs> there's something there. <laughs> Please, someone help me. Yes, it's always coming set, Vin. Nothing. There's a lot of okay. cards, though, on the turn that could really slow down the action. Another straight I mean, card, another spade. Can a probably play as a check raise for serve, especially if Jan elects to call here. Jan might just fold with with two people behind and the better who's betting half pot. Nice fold there. But I think Bet serve can also just play this as a call. I mean, you don't want to get in 100 big blinds here. You know, maybe you want to stay a little under rep, start to get more value later. Um, you, know, you don't want to scare off a jack X type hand. So does just play it as a call. But destined, surely, to lose, you know, at least another 3 million chips. When you're sitting there with a set of sevens for Gannick, too, you're thinking, okay, my opponent's going to have so many combinations of hands that they're going to want to continue here. You know, 9-8 of spades, uh, jack X of spades, jack 9, pocket yeah. fives. Um, you know, even something like ace 10 of spades, ace 8 of spades, ace 6 of spades. So... That's why we see this large sizing here. And that is a brutal river card for serve. It's not what you want. No. And checks again to Yannick Poker, who has a lock on this now with the set of sevens. How much value can they get from the set of fives? Well, you also, um, you know, as serve here, you're going to expect that your opponent thinks you're capped. Fives are so under-repped here because you have so many wider kind of hands from the big blind, you know, jack eight here. Um, it isn't just pocket pairs and the like, so that's why we see the big bet, and I think serve needs to call being up against all those kind of combo draws. I mean, you have a set of fives. You're also going to be value bet here by something like jack nine, so it's not like you're um, only losing to value. You've three of a kind. Wow. Finds a fold. Finds a fold Get and real. we are Get switching real. over to the other table, which is five-handed. And we've got ace-queen opening. We've got a three bet from the very aggressive Luis Faria with ace-three. Thomas Mulocker folding the sixes. Dinge Brinker with queen-four in the big blind. That was insane fold, man. I don't know. That was something else. I would love to talk to some people about that hand. That's you can talk, talk to me. I'm here. <laughs> James, you folded a set. It wasn't like I a know. I four I cards saw straight. It, it wasn't. <sighs> folded quick, James. Sometimes you just know. Sometimes you get all rumbly in the tumbly, and you just get that instinct that something's not right here. Well, we're jumping right into some action here. Lewis for Faria, who we were shown earlier, playing quite aggressive. Looks like that is still the plan, being in this three-bet pot against the ace-queen. Actually out-flopping prudently. Yeah, it is a domination rotation situation in Luis's favor. Yeah, and with that ace, queen, queen of diamonds, Prudently is actually going to call this flop. Going to be ahead of some of the bluffs. Going to have some equity, you know, turning an ace or a queen. And now perhaps an opportunity, you know, ace, queen high is probably not going to be good a great deal of the time here. You would hate to 
lose to something like ace three or ace king here when ace queen a bet here might work. And even something so small, I think, James, I mean, it doesn't really look like worse than ace-3, does it? Why would ace-queen bet like this? But it is such a good price for Louis Faria. Yeah, wow. Really, really cool bet size there. <sighs> These guys are good at poker. You noticed? Yes. Bernie! Opening with ace king here. Bernie is the shortest stack at this table. In fact, Bernie is the shortest stack in the tournament. Yeah, and I think with a hundred big blinds, five handed. You know, this is probably the worst hand you're going to call with out of the small blind, but I wouldn't be surprised to see B Dinge Brinker do it. You know, if you have queen nine suited here, you'd probably fold. Um, queen ten off, you'd fold. And assuming that Bernie has difficulty firing a bet on this flop, it's going to open up the door for Dinge Brinker to win this hand on future streets. Maybe not as much with the jack. Now that it's paired, it's less likely Dinge Brinker has a jack. You're losing to, to less hands when you see a bet here from the small blind. But Dinge Brinker might feel an uh, attachment to this hand because of that draw. And, and now Bernie's facing... Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, Bernie's still with the best of it, with ace high, but facing a sizable bet from Dinge Brinker. And gets there on the river. And Dinge Brinker is looking at the pot, which is 3 million, looking at Bernie's stack, which is 2.3 million. And shove, call. Bernie Snap. gets the double up. And blinds Snap. go to 125, 250. So Bernie is still at the bottom of the leaderboard, Griffin, but now has 7.7 .7 million. So that's like nearly 40 bigs, and that's the shortest stack? Yeah, and that's why that bluff by Dinge Brinker does surprise me a little bit. You know, part of the reason you want to bluff with that Queen 10 there on the turn is because... Um, you know, there's a lot of different rivers where either you can just represent a shot. It's hard for people to call an all-in with ace high on the river. It's a point. When the river comes in ace, you know, and Bernie is already last in chips. I mean, we saw how quickly Bernie called. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't care what you're trying to rep here. If you have a jack, show me. And uh, so I think it was a bit of a misstep from Dinge Brinker. But, you know, you also don't know. He could just be looking up at the clock and randomizing and says he needs to bluff there 25 percent of the time and does you know how do these guys how these guys can work so um yes bernie with the bond seven five of spades this is a big opportunity for bernie to make a lifelong fan with James Hardigan here. Woo! Yes. Got to raise the bond. And should be able to get through the very talented, very experienced Wushu TM in the big blind. But with the hand. Oh, and getting out flopped. And dare I say, but this is a bit of a street flashboard? <laughs> no. Don't overreach, Griffin. <laughs> you need. What do you mean? Three of you spades, need the five of spades, seven of spades, you four of spades. The, you need the four, if, if, if you get the four of spades or the six of spades, see, no. You need, need four cards. The four cards. of spades is right there. <laughs> Not in play. <laughs> All your rules. I mean, it's a stretch. We do it when someone's got a gut shot to a straight flush that can't be made because one of the cards has been folded already. I can't do it oh. and then legitimately is not a straight flush James, draw. James, James, hey, 
Sun's getting real low, James. Ooh, come on. It's two pair now with the seven five of spades. <laughs> oh, you and your logic. It says Stona Daona. Oh, Wushu. Doing the little trick we saw Yannick do. Trying to set the price. Oh, Wushu, don't God. get crazy. Don't you be shoving now. Don't you be shoving, Wushu. <laughs> you, saw, you saw the way Bernie snapped off the Ace King. If, if Bernie <laughs> has two pair or better here, he's not folding. Okay, just because you think that you have all the six fours here with your four blocker, don't do it. Wushu, Thomas Mulacker, I am your conscience speaking. This person is not going to fold a value hand. You could have a set of sevens. You could have seven five suited. Do, Wushu, you put that you put that down right now. Thank yeah. you. Burning up to nearly ten million now. Might have an opportunity here for Wushu to, well, I was going to say maybe three bet, but actually decides to play it as a call, which I think is fine as well. You're going to be ahead of the opening range. And this is part of the reason, James, that you want to call a hand like King-10 against a button open against a player like Luis Faria, who's pretty tough pre-flop, but you're going to have yeah. all the dominating 10s. You know, so some dominating kings, most of the dominating kings, and that's the exact situation that Wushu finds himself in. Cheeky check back from Luis Fiera Faria. Cheek back. Finally betting, coming out of the woodwork. You know, it is one of those boards that maybe when you're three-handed and you flopped so well that you want to stay under repped but not be faced with the check raise. And now coming out big, trying to get value from hands like sevens or eights. Maybe ace nine, something like that, that certainly is in the range of Wushu. Maybe some combo type hands from the big blind as well. And there is the seven from heaven. James, where is the graphic? Thank you. From your screen, you dimwit. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh, poor Wushu. You did everything right, didn't you? You did everything right, and you still let the family down by getting rivered. <laughs> this is why you'll never final table the WQ main. <laughs> oh, 3.2 into 4.2, and Mulocker considering making this call with top pair on a Don't very straighty board makes uh. the call. And is now down to five million. Luis Faria has the chip lead at this table, 27 mil. The overall chip leader right now is Anti Killer, who's over at the other table, who's up to 42 million now. Prudently. It would be prudent to raise her. Dinge. Dinge. <laughs> okay, quick opening raise from Luis with Ace King. 
Bernie with Queen Jack in the big blind might want to have a look at a flop. Bernie, the comeback kid. Bernie with the Sam Grafton avatar. <laughs> oh, man. Dun, 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 dun. Boring hand. No one even, even has a spade to get weird. Maybe if Bernie had a spade, might want to get weird. No one has a spade. I mean, Bernie might get weird. Yeah, baby! Uh, Louis Freer, though. So, have we discussed this avatar? Is it... Is that Elon Musk holding the, like, Dodge coin? Is that the whole thing? In, like, it Jesus looks like robes? Musk. I'm not sure what he's holding. Oh! All in, Bernie. All in, Bernie. No. Seb Poker asks Griffin, where are you from? And I'm reading that question with the tone of voice that the answer is meant to be a planet rather than an actual country. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a misconception. I'm not actually from a planet. I'm from the moon of a planet. <laughs> <laughs> that is entirely believable. Griffin is from the Another. great country of Canada. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another great opportunity for Bernie there to chip up a little bit with those threes. Really finding that, you know, I don't care that the average is 100 big blinds and I have 40. I'm just going to shove with threes on your open. It's more like 35. Oh, man. Dr. Fleesh says, Griffin is from a planet where they can't sing chop pot songs. <sighs> If I that's, knew how to ban people, that's not true. I would. That's not true. <laughs> Gri Griffin Griffin approaches the chop pot song with intense enthusiasm. Yeah. Uh, what was it? What was it described as that you described it as? Uh, it wasn't camp, was it? It was some other. Too much of something. Hammy. Too much ham. Ham. Too much ham. Too much John Ham. Yeah. Son of a. Wow. Can we get some cool, like, hands here? This is, like, eight deuce against queen three. God met says, I thought Griffin was from Sweden. Just because he said what is up to the people of Sweden doesn't mean he's from Sweden. I will say that I know a little Swedish. Only curse Her words is... from my gaming days. <laughs> I know how to say all the curse words. Because when you play on a Counter-Strike team full of Scandinavian people, when they, you know, get eliminated in the game, they tend to curse. So I've memorized all the curses. Like, Helveta. Harry, good. These aren't that bad. Don't worry, I'm not saying bad words. I was going to say, I like... don't want complaints from Swedish Oh viewers. my god, no, that was, that was, I think it was hell and oh my god. Those are okay, the PG-13 ones. That's fine. <laughs> See, look, Humflux is saying it. Harry, good. Two baby aces 
in their strollers, ready for nothing to happen. But maybe a chop. Which would accept? Is how do good is? Oh my lord! I think that's a bit ne negligent. You know, it's like the same. Oh wow, I'm getting good pronunciation marks. One thing I, I don't didn't think, think was going to happen today, by the way. I, I, I expected the evening to go a lot <laughs> slower. I mean, granted, the last hour has kind of like slowed down, but the first kind of couple of sessions were completely manic. Um, I didn't know which players were going to go deep, which players were going to go out. I didn't know what the chip distribution was going to look like. The one thing I certainly did not expect is we were all going to be getting Swedish lessons from Griffin Benja. That is one thing that <laughs> I never would have predicted in a million years. Well, did you predict oh. that... We're going to have our first song. That's true. Especially thanks to Barry. You we get bluff? double the memes, double the fun, because Griffin, this is a chop pot, and you know what they say. Everyone, Everyone loves, loves a, a chop, chop pot. pot. That's pretty good. Now, people, everyone's going to have expectations from, like, London, and, you know, when we're all in the booth together. The this. Two is a strong online chop pot, okay? That was yeah. solid. That was good. That's James and I doing our thing. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and Getting along. I would also yeah. say that that was an acceptable performance, Griffin, and certainly didn't involve too much skinker, which I understand is ham in Swedish. <laughs> Did you just look that up for that? Oh, my goodness. Thank you to Joe Stapleton, <laughs> who I'm assuming had access to Google Translate, unless Joe also knows random words of Swedish. <laughs> Skinka. Bernie loves getting in those 40 big blinds with the small pairs and wants to seduce Lewis into ISOing here. But instead, Lewis is just going <gasps> to check back and flop the nets. <laughs> <laughs> this is all Lewis all day. And even though Bernie has a pair and it's heads up, you are not sticking around. Oh my gosh, these hands! <sighs> this one, Griffin. This one. Uh, take it right now. I think we might see a flop. I don't think Lewis really wants to play this as a three bet get in for 35 bigs, so we're going to see three. Unless Dinge Brinker wants to get weird, but I would anticipate just a call pre flop here. Jamper 123 asks Will it finish today? It will not finish today. Um, we will finish tomorrow, with or without you. But please join us. So, good flop for Lewis here. Um, Bernie going to play this as a check, even though, you know, sometimes you're the aggressor, technically you should have the, the, the strongest range. I think Bernie is a little wary of how often Lewis is going to float this or have a reasonably strong hand like, um, like they do. So I, I like this give up from Bernie. Well, an exciting development on Twitch where we've just had a viewer dump from Easy with Aces. Thank you, Finton. Appreciate the thanks. offload of audience. Hey, hey, thanks for the hand. <laughs> 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 
And Wushu shoving for the 20 bigs. And Lewis Faria certainly would be calling this for, you know, in that 10 to maybe 13 range with all these chips. But this has just got to be a bit too much. You don't want to double up the very talented Thomas Mulocker. I've been calling him talented all night. I'm really, really greasing his tires, huh? Well, they do call him Tommy Talented. <laughs> and if they don't, no, they need that to is start. good. <laughs> yeah, talented Tommy. Who made the final table? Ah, oh, Tim Adams, T talented Tommy. <laughs> yeah, we'll make it a thing. It's definitely a tendency. As soon as we make a thing, it, it usually sticks. Like this bloody unicorn thing that I don't even know how it started. Just can't <laughs> shake it. <laughs> People in the streets. <laughs> you know, I did. I didn't want. The, I did want the kazoo stuff to end, but now it's just. Hey, is that the unicorn? <laughs> That's the unicorn, Griffin Benjer. <laughs> As I said, you're known for so many things. <laughs> and you just thought one more. Yeah, actually, I like that son of a perch here. Cleaned it up a little bit on Twitch. Tommy the talent. Kind of like that. It's crisp. I mean, Mulocker really screwed up this hand. Big time. Would have flopped the world and then would have turned. You, uh, you just, just you, uh, we almost gave you a nickname, Wushu. You almost had a future. But this is why you're out of the family. Demuccio says, always going to be a CS player first, then poker player, reminding me that I peaked when I was 20 years old. It's been downhill ever <laughs> since. <laughs> Just know you'll always be a Counter-Shake player. No matter how many millions you win, you can't run from your past. <laughs> Wushu. Just didn't have much success defending the 4-3 earlier. Now with the 4-6, technically better. And did just fall victim, James, to, you know, seeing a board after folding 7-3 that, uh, you know, came a lot of 7s, a lot of 3s. Definitely going to want to continue here with this little disguised gut shot. Whether that's as a call or a raise remains to be seen. I think it's going to play a lot easier as a check raise. Um, but you're getting such a nice price, too, to just call. By doing this, you're, you're really attacking hands like the one Prudently has that is going to have a lot of opportunities on future streets to keep betting, you know, a 10 on the turn, an 8 of diamonds. But instead, you just say, okay, I'm pretty short stacked here, Prudently. Do you want to mess around with your jack high? Oh, you do? Well, guess what? I got the nuts again. There's always the chance you hit it, James. Now always. what, prudently? You thought you were so cool, calling with your jack high, impressing everyone, all the 4,000 of us? At least Mulocker realized from that 7-3 hand, I need to start playing more cards. Yes. Maybe I could connect with some boards, and lo and hey. behold. That's why they call him Tommy the Talent. Tommy, the talent, Mulocker. <laughs> Ace three button raise from Luis Faria, who is in second place right now with a stack of 31 million. Anti Killer remains chip leader with 46 million. And Wushu and Bernie are the two shortest stacks right now, but just to clarify, are not short stacked. Lewis, our big daddy at the table.
with well over 100 big blinds. Should get this through pretty clean. And well, I'll tell you what, Griffin. Impressive stack. Clearly got a lot of UK poker fans watching on Twitch. A lot of people demanding that we see UK player Adrian Mateos. And yes, all I would say, guys, is we are switching regularly between the tables. And chances are we'll go back there soon. And obviously, if there's any significant action from that table, we'll get over there. Yes. Yes. Always nice to check in on the Brits, you know? I mean, we just came yeah, back yeah. from EPT London. It was great to be back. We had a British winner. And um, we try to stay remain unbiased here at PokerStars. But if there is a Brit like Adrian Mateos deep in an event like this, we want to cover him, you know? Hometown I mean, look, kid. You know, I see the number of Brazilian victories in WCOOP. You know, the UK some way behind. Just need players like yes. Mateos to just get us get yes. us up a little bit. Close the gap. Yeah. London-born, you know, real salt of the earth. Uh, not sure London-born, but certainly a London resident and certainly yes. a UK player. <laughs> Union Jack against his name in the client. This is all fact. And a play has concluded at this table. So there you go. Here's your chance to see. Switching! The other table. And this is all yawn. Oh, that's not going to work. Ya own? That's how we're pronouncing it, right? Like you own? So, we did get through an entire session without losing a player. We are still at 11. One away from hand for hand, two away from making the final table and being done for the day. It's the penultimate day of the 10K World Championship of No Limit Hold'em. Anti-Killer still in the Catbird seat right now with close to 46 million chips. Bernie, the shortest stack, with just shy of 7 million. Joe Stapleton has returned to the stream. Huzzah, there was much rejoicing. And Joe, during the break, you discovered the existence of another poker movie which we could discuss on the podcast. Yeah, Chad Holloway uh, tweeted about, I mean, every time there's a new poker movie, I'm shocked that there can possibly be one that we haven't heard of yet, but they pop up fairly regularly. And apparently there's some movie called Hitting the Nuts, the true story of the Scott County series of poker. Never heard of it. Apparently it's a comedy. And wow. um, I love I love things we could do on Poker Movie Mondays because it means we don't have to talk about real stuff because talking about reality sucks. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that's particularly pertinent to your position right now considering what particular day it is in the united states of america and what headlines you might be looking at tomorrow morning but um yeah i, I i'm guessing this isn't a new movie judging by what chad has said it seems when he says it's one of his favorites sounds like it might have been around for a while yeah i mean i haven't done too much more research on it 2010, it and it has a cover of, of an ace and a king on the cover, which is just great. Ace of spades, king of hearts. An outrageous group of misfits, including an Amish farmer, strive to hit the nuts in an annual illegal poker championship in Scott County, Indiana. I mean, this is incredible that this movie has existed for more than a decade, and neither of us was aware of its existence. Who's in it? Are there any, any, pl any actors we may have heard of? No actors that i have heard of um yeah but some people that have nice headshots i mean at least hey yeah on imdb two of the 20 actors listed three of the actors have headshots on imdb so well there you, there you go, go. There That's you pretty go. Good okay. the rest of them are just silhouettes <laughs> uh, so we need to add that to the list we've got the russell crowe movie poker face we'll do at least one poker movie monday before the year is out of course joe we are 
due to record a podcast on Thursday of this week, once WCOOP is wrapped. And I guess it will finally be our postponed WCOOP recap episode. We talked earlier on about the fact that we've already caught up with Benny Glaser. So we do need to interview someone who is, I guess, relevant to what we've seen in the last few days. Whether it's someone who makes the final table tomorrow, someone who wins tomorrow, we need to start thinking about some options. Is there anyone out there that you guys want to see us interview and talk to for our WCOOP recap podcast? Uh, a reminder, a little bit of cross-promotion here, that there is the PokerStars Discord server. Uh, and, of course, we have dedicated podcast channels on that Discord server. And I believe one of them is suggestions. So, suggest a guest. Uh, no, not Spracky. Come on. Come on. We can do better than Spracky. Someone who finished higher than, like, you know, 60th. Um, is Spracky still in this? Sorry. No. <laughs> I mean, t to be fair, <laughs> it was actually a genuine question yesterday because even <laughs> though we didn't think he was going to be in, he late regged for his final 10K bullet, his third 10K bullet at the start of day two, made it into the money, so was actually in the tournament for a significant percentage of yesterday. And still lost money because of the three bullets, probably. Uh, I believe one of Just them... Got over it? At least one of them was a satellite, and one of them, I think, was contractual. But uh, okay. I think the bigger problem, Griffin, mm. was not the bullets he fired in W Coop. He obviously is still, you know, in makeup after that four... 100k bullets in the PCA Super High Roller back in 2019. Remember, Min Cash in the PSPC was all full of himself, thought he could mix it up with the 100k players, fired off yes. four bullets. Yeah, that's that's something, there's no quick coming back from that. But the all. hardest part was uh, pulling him away from the cage for the fifth bullet. I mean, that was the scariest part. I, mean, I know, he just dug his claws think. in. He was yeah. just, yeah. 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 But uh, we uh, got him out of there. Well, time to get back to the action in this W Cube High Buy-In main event. I will leave you with Joe and Griffin to call the action. All right, so I just want to go on record. Obviously, James is not here for me to say that I said it was going to slow down, and it did. It did. Correct. Right. Ding, ding, ding. Right over here. 11 players still remain of the 760 total entries trying to get down to nine i can see that anti killer is still number one 45 million in chips luis faria number two who's second at this table oh wow anti killer what a sick table draw all the rest of the big stacks specifically luis imprudently at the other table I like the way Yannick's been playing, um, you know, is obviously down from the sort of 19-ish million we saw them with when we were covering this table before, but uh, has definitely been getting involved, played a beautiful, um, you know, river bluff against Amadi, and now correctly calling from the small blind against the range of anti-killer and flopping huge. And this is kind of one of those cards that Anti-Killer might be inclined to barrel because you are going to fold out those kind of hands like maybe Ace-7 suited. But would that really have called pre-flop? Some 7-8 suited would have maybe. So is going to use that card as a, as a barrel to try to fold out those, you know, maybe Ace-10 type of hands as well. But that king ain't going nowhere. And as long as the 10 doesn't come on the river, should be very happy with the result of this hand. Yeah, not uh, not full. May fold out ace 10, not folding out king 9. No, and actually playing it as a raise instead. A bit surprising, um, but maybe wanting to even just induce anti-killer. Maybe prepared to go broke on this turn. You know, Joe. Hello there. Nice to see your face. Hello, my babies. Joe Stapleton, Griffin I Benger, or say, as Nick Walsh thinks your name is Griffin Benj. Oh, yeah? Is that a thing that I missed? I he tagged Griffin Benj. Benj on Twitter today without the R. Okay, gotcha. Um, 
I hope that this poker movie you watch hitting the nuts. I hope that when and if and when they do hit the nuts, they don't fold it like in Molly's game. Sorry, that's my little So I really, here. really hated that aspect of Molly's game the first time I watched it. And then the second time, I kind of got more what they were going for. <sighs> what, that you can be so, like, intimidating and all this stuff that you can get people to fold the nuts? No, yes. Joe! I am putting yes. my foot down. Who is with me? I'm storming out. That you can be, especially if you're a Hollywood star, you can be so persuasive. You can be so... Ugh. Uh, what do they call it? Um, I don't have it. I know you don't charismatic. have it. Charismatic. That's why it's difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's why what I mean. You can be so charismatic. That thing I don't have, charisma, that someone could still fold the nuts. Also, I, I don't think you can think tell it's a that story movie. without it being the stone nuts, man. Like, come on. It just... It's insulting to, to anyone who actually knows the rules of poker because no one folds. I've never seen someone that folds the nuts if they know they had it. You've never played in Molly's game where it's people that literally are complete buffoons who have way too much money who just want to play with celebrities. Touche, Joe. <laughs> but Considering... I don't have a problem with you having a problem with it either. I just don't think it's a poker movie. Yeah, I guess. I mean, listen. You're gonna have more of an insight into the cap into the you know the capabilities of 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 Hollywood stars playing poker. And well, we played we literally game, talked to Aaron Sorkin about it on the podcast, and oh, yeah, uh, he agreed that it was not a poker movie. Yeah, on getting three e bet. Yeah, I would like to see Yan call this. You know, you don't love calling three bets with king queen but of course suited your your penis feeling pretty good and look at that king on king crime do you ever okay so anti killer does check top pair and like joffrey versus john snow one of these has a mathematical advantage it's a king joke this is the wrong situation the wrong does that not how it works? How do you do it? What do you, what do, you do? No. do a king one. No? It's it's not about kings. It's about flips. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. That's not about... Okay, yeah. Sorry. Oh! Anti-killer picks up a ton of equity on this turn. Oof, and Jan going to play it aggressively. And, of course, Anti-Killer is not going anywhere. Whether this plays as a check shove or a check call remains to be seen. The thing is, you're never folding out worse when you check shove the king deuce of clubs here. So rather just keep in the bluffs and try to get there against the hands you're losing to. Um, and I think Jan is going to be too high up in his range you're only really losing to, like, pocket aces and ace-king. And would those kind of hands really be playing at this defensively? No. So you're expecting a lot of hands like the one anti-killer has. You know, maybe something like king-10 off the word of three vet from the small. All those suited kings. You gotta bet, Jan. Don't you check. That a boy. All of it. All of it. Jan jamming for less than pot. Pretty tough to get away from top pair here. And what are they never jamming beating though, any Griffin? Value. Yeah, what are they never, jamming with? Yeah. Queens? Huh? Does Queens play it like this? No. No. Oh and, oh, and you know when the time's going down. Full value for Yawn. Beautiful, beautifully played. Beautiful. Not played. just full value, but a catapult to the second spot on the leaderboard. Ant killer. Drops down only to third, but it, now it's Luis Faria who's on top with uh, in second. Very big double up from Jan, and, and one of those situations that 
you know, not every player is going to be going for max value in the king-queen spot there. Ask yourself. You're sitting there. You're watching with us. Would you have shoved the king-queen there for 10 million chips with 11 left in the W cup main? Would yes. Would gotten full value? Perhaps not. But perhaps... And but I would have been shoving it to king nuts, three, which was which would have been two pair. Speaking of the nuts, pretty good flop for anti killer and Yannick Poker, but KZH just all over this. Wow! And I would you got You got just call here, right? You just call. No, I think with the diamond combos out there, the fact that you unblock so much of like all of the board you know you, you want to get it in against the two pair here you don't want there to be some diamond i know it's easy sometimes to be kind of results oriented in what we see that both of these hands probably won't continue and are so far behind eight nine but that's not always going to be the case you know sometimes uh yannick poker is betting this small to ch to to reshove on the flop with queen eight of diamond diamonds you know so it's it's just about getting the money in here hoping you're up against a set of fives or, you know, seven, six suited. And you can see that we actually Ooh. see anti-killer. You must be on tilt, brother, because this is a very, very aggressive and optimistic call, and it's all predicated on the fact that you're hoping to turn something like this, and now you have to call. We're all in, boys. Snap calls. River card is a 10. Not good enough. Not the club we were looking for. Double up for KZHH, switching. Yeah, and don't underestimate the uh, value of a little tilt too, Joe. I mean, that was not a nice hand from Anti-Killer. Someone who has been one of the chip leaders or the chip leader for a while now. And any way you slice it, that is just not going to end well when you call on the flop there. You've allowed yourself to turn more equity than you have to call off. Suddenly, you know, you're 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 an average stack when you had forty five million know, just twenty minutes ago. You know how during the rest of W Coop we covered final tables exclusively? Mm hmm Is this what went on every time? This is crazy. <laughs> this is wild that this happened before the final like final tables are like kind of standard, right? Like this is pretty whack what's going on with the changing of the chip leads and the hero calls and the i mean this is this is pretty nuts yeah but it's i mean it's also a card distribution thing too i mean i'll tell you what james and i we, we were having a slow level there talking about uh you know swedish curse words and, <laughs> and like i mean that's the way this goes sometimes and what's What's so what's so fascinating about watching every hand is that, you know, sometimes it just comes in these crazy waves and other times you're just sitting back and talking about uh, the M. Night Shyamalan movie you watched last night. Um, but uh, we're certainly you glad watch, you guys old? are here with us. Signs. Oh, Signs. One of my, That's a tough one like for me. One. Signs I saw four times in the theater, but knowing what I know now about uh, a particular actor in Signs, oh, really? I can't. That's... It's hard. It's Oh, interesting. Okay. You can't separate the... Oh, baby. There's another bluff. That's a whole other conversation, I guess. Yes. This one, one will eliminate Thomas Mulocker. And look how much money is in the pot, Joe. Like, we kind if of... If Luis can hero call... Interrupted this one. Not... I know I did not see this escalating like this. Probably should have been paying slightly more attention, but yeah. Wushu running a triple barrel bluff. I mean, if you never yes, think you're winning oh, no. here, escalate oh, quickly. Oh, and there's the hero call from the pair of threes. Luis Faria knocks out Thomas Mulocker in 11th place. We're down to 10. We're on the bubble, the final table bubble. Moolocker cashing for a hundred grand, so it's six figured score. Six figured score. What? what Can is I that? just say that the was six amazing? Six figure score. How the call there was timed exactly with you crashing into glass. That was great. <laughs> it's not <laughs> my first. It's perfectly timed. Yeah. Rodeo. Oh, and we've go. got it all in. Bernie is ahead, but at risk. 
And his home and dry is going to double up. Dinge Brinker just got doubled through. Serve Lamin, welcome to the table. Two tables of five now. Ace Tommy King the talent. For Luis Faria, the chip leader. With the bluff. Puckle Patrick says, snap call, king queen off. Griffin, thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, it was all based on intention there. You know, you're playing with these guys for a while. That was five handed, you know, playing sub 20 big blinds. Once he opened and, and Dingebrinker elected to check raise, that the intention was to get the money in. Um, you're going to get a lot of folds sometimes. You're going to be in flips against tens, ace jack, the like. Oh, baby. Wow. Wow, 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 wee wow. Servla hits the flush in the turn. Luis drawing to a bigger flush. Yeah. And, and drawing some to some hands that will be difficult to fold to a flush. Yeah, I wonder, and we see the big bet, and this... Wow. It's not that it surprises me. I think the intention here is to bet big to get value from hands like King X, Queen Jack with, uh, you know, a diamond... You're only really going to get raised by flushes, which Ace King isn't actually doing very well here against. And it gives you the opportunity to just check back here. And I think that's why Lewis bet big. And we'll just be checking back this river. Interesting. Don't get greedy, Lewis. Man, if I could only learn that skill, betting big on the turn so that you can check back on the river. How do you recognize those spots? Well, uh, Lewis still might go for a little value here. You know, expecting your opponent to, you know, call with some, some king axes. You want that extra little slice of value. But like I predicted and hoped, very nice check back from Lewis for, for Raya. Griffin, you sure you don't want to play this game anymore? <laughs> I, I want to play. I, I might I might play. Uh, I might play the PSPC. We'll see. All right. Of course. It's be me and James, the only two. <laughs> People not playing the PSPC. Uh, how about me? My only tournament in like the last uh, year or so. No, that's not true. I played a 1K here in Montreal. Final table bet. <laughs> 275 players. No big deal. I got seventh for like seven grand Canadian. Wow. Yeah. Didn't win a World Series seat or anything, but... <laughs> well, hand for hand plays hand in progress. Hand. So Ching, yes, Amadi, the British legend. Foxo sixty nine sixty nine says, "Man, Griffin, annoying. You should have met Boy Griffin." I was a terror <laughs> as a kid. <laughs> <And Japan. laughs> I was a terror. Yawn with the King Deuce of Diamonds. Ooh, a bit on the tight side, but I think recognizing, too, that any killer is kind of on one a little bit. And the very capable players in the blinds. It's interesting always to see how different players are going to react to having big chip stacks. I think we've seen a lot of these big chip leaders open a hand like King Deuce suited at the cutoff. But not Yan. I'm not sure if Velvet this is Yannick asks. or like ya boy Nick. Ya Nick. This is ya Nick. <laughs> Velvet asks, do I play any tournaments at Playground? That's actually the, what I was referencing. Yeah, sometimes. They haven't been running as many tournaments lately, though. What with all the slot machines they brought in there. Ya Nick betting, betting again. Big. Full pot. Why so serious, ya Nick? Yeah, with all those kind of draws that are on this board, KZ hand history ain't going nowhere. You think of all those Jack 7s, but again, you know what? One of the straight draws that shows up a lot here is 10-7, 5-7. Mm -hmm. If Yannick believes KZ has a hand like they do, might want to bet big here and try to fold that out. Now, Yannick is going to have... Jack seven, some ten jack, 
queen jack queen 10 but goes yeah they're going all for of it. it if kzhh calls we're done for the day doesn't call though gets it through freaking impressive man just awesome stuff Anytime we turn up. Yannick seems to be doing something awesome, and it really shows you what it takes um, to play at this level and to be successful. It ain't easy to win $1.293 million in poker, especially not in 2022. And I'm telling you, moves like that from Yannick, other ones we've seen from them and others, it's a lot of hard work and a lot of experimentation and to just make these bladed moves that just seems so hard to have any response to. Even when you're literally maybe top 10 players in the world like Amadi, you saw when Yannick Poker sliced up Amadi earlier with that amazing bluff with the ace-8. Aces! We switched! We got aces. Ace, ace for Dinge Brinker. Bernie opened a six. I feel like this is one you can easily get away from. I love the avatar here, too. It's like, hey, man, just kidding. Yeah, baby. Ace queen for Bernie now. Yeah, might face some resistance from prudently. Question is, is it going to come in the form of a call or a three bet? I think I would prefer just playing this as a call. Not just because I can see the hands. You know, this is obviously going to be one of the worst hands you're going to call with from the small blind here, but Bernie, ha having just been 3-bet, I think maybe he's going to open a little tighter in this situation and is also under the gun, even though we are just 5-handed. Not a call. Certainly going to... Just a flat from Ace-Queen. Top pair for Prudently. And it's going to lead at this for one and a half million. Yeah, and with the ace, queen, ace of clubs, you kind of are inclined to continue here. You're hoping to turn that queen or ace or a club. But sometimes you're also going to be ahead on this flop. I know we can see that, of course, Bernie isn't ahead, but think about all the other hands that are three betting. If, if king nine suited is, king ten suited is going to be here and, and making this bet, so... Just a bit unlucky, and now can comfortably fold and live to fight another day. And Bernie does let it go, does live to fight another day, but is the shortest stack left in this tournament. Ooh, and Luis. Two very playable hands here, and that's neither of them were the one that raised Joe. Yeah, ace five. Flat here from Dinge Brinker seems to make a three bet here pretty much a no-brainer with Ace Queen suited. Yeah, it's you know a clean value three bet. Sometimes I think you're gonna find a back shove by some portion of Dinge Brinker's range. You know, might flat a hand like tens or jacks and or like you know chopping with ace-queen kind of thing, but also you're just going to fold out so many hands from Lewis here and then should get some folds from Dinge Breaker, but yeah. Han Fan play is in progress. That went down pre-flop. Ooh, we've gotten to a river here with 4-7 for an anti-killer. <laughs> oh, we've gotten to a river. <laughs> Joe, you're very excited about that hand. 780 in the middle. <laughs> Sometimes the hands you ignore the most, people just go crazy with some sort of river, a zero equity bluff, and then you gotta sweat the call. Yeah.
Ace, seven, six, two clubs. That's a five, six, seven, eight. That's the Bob Fosse for KZHH. Ooh, and a four on the turn is a straightenizing card for KZHH. Yannick drawing the, dead. The pistachios, the cashews. Back on over to table other. Pair of sevens for Bernie and a straight draw. Pair of eights and fours for Luis. Oh, the old not kidding around bet. The old let's try to get all the money in when my opponent has a queen bet. Unfortunately for Luis Faria. Up against the 7-5. Is going to still call with that gutter on top. And did not make the gutter. That's bad, bad news for Bernie. Yeah, and Joe, I got to say, if you're prepared to think that Louis Faria doesn't have it on the turn, you might be inclined to make a hero all-in call on the river. I mean, Louis is going to have... Again, we, we, we jumped into the action here on the turn, so I can't speak to the rest of the hand, and Bernie just folds. Luis still first in chips for this entire tournament. Ace is now for Servla. And Luis with a playable hand in the small blind. How do you get one of those little emoji things? You got to have a channel that's like a partner or something, something. I don't know. I think I, I, I was partnered years ago. <laughs> Eight high flop. Luis in pretty bad shape with only one club out there. I mean, they must shut down your partnership at some point. You haven't done it for a while. Yeah, Luis with the back door flush draw. The two overs to the eight. Might want to call this small bet. Because you're going to be live against a lot of hands that aren't aces. Affiliate. You have to be an affiliate to get emotes. And Luis officially drawing dead on this six of spades turn. And the six of clubs river is no help either. King High might be the best hand sometimes, but it ain't now. One point nine million is the bet from Servla. Does not get the call. Still playing on, looking to lose one more before we call it a night. Come back tomorrow for the final table. Ace queen raising yeah. Bernie, the shortest stack of this entire tournament. Yeah, and Dinge Brink Brinker is actually in a similar situation than he was earlier with the king queen. King Jack is quite a bit worse but Bernie is quite a bit shorter so might just want a three bet here you know because of you're gonna fold out so many hands and then sometimes you just get it in for the 16 bigs but I much prefer playing this as a call probably about breaking even with the range four six still not ahead but has plenty of ways to win this pot But Bernie is going to continue. Real small, as small as possible. Yeah, and opens up the door for prudently to at least see a turn for that amount.
prudently would prefer not to see a turn and just win it right here with a raise to one million. Oof. And it's an ace on the turn, so prudently is going to have to make the hand now. Yeah, and this has been a been a theme of Bernie's, you know, betting small, inducing these bluff raises when, when Bernie has ace high, and hitting the ace. And now Prudently is going to continue the story simply because as much of the... Oh, just let me see the shove from Bernie. Makes sense. Bernie doesn't have that much left behind. Unfortunately, does take away Prudently's ability to bluff the river should they miss. And that was yeah, a near double up for Bernie, who's got pocket kings now. Prime Splitter says, at first I thought it was endearing to bring up Counter-Strike history, but now I see how many other people make the same reference. It feels like he's seen this a billion times. Yes. Thank you. You for know, it's comment. funny. There's actually another reference I've seen even more in a shorter amount of time than the What Up Now Swedes one. And it ain't a Counter-Strike reference. Is it a reference to luggage? Uh, no, what's the luggage one? Checking your luggage. Oh, yes. Checking your luggage. Yes. Yeah. Someone was just asking, by the way, how often does Ace Rag beat Kings out of 100 times? And we're seeing this right here. Ace, Dine, Al flopping, Pocket Kings. Neither player likely to go. Well, Bernie, the only player that could go broke here. And I don't think that's super likely with the Ace high flop, but we'll see. That's a good, good size here to get called by Kings. Yeah, and you're paid the service of being allowed to bet so big because you have a bunch of missed clubs. So Bernie's going to be sitting there thinking, oh, gosh, you probably value betting me with an ace, but you could just have nine jack of clubs. But you didn't, Bernie. and now I only have 20 bigs. Bernie does pay it off and is back in dire straits. Just 20 big blinds. Switching. How come? Queen nine raising into ace queen and being raised into back again. Is that English? I don't know. Sounds good. Have we ever used... You just gave me an idea, Joe. Have we ever used a situation where, like, someone is facing a straight and we say that he's in dire straits? I think we should, that's I've, that there's something. I've there. done a lot of commentary over the years, pal. I don't know. I'm gonna say no. I'm just saying. I, I heard you say positive. dire straits, but there are straits that are made. Like we could, this could be a thing. This could be our next. I'm aware of the wordplay. Our next big hit. Okay. Sorry. This is something I should have brought up after the show, I guess. Maybe if it's a straight versus straight, you know, like a second nut straight versus nut Ooh, like straight. The, oh, straight. my gosh. Like the ace queen against queens. So it, it's not something we yeah. overuse, but it's that's that is dire straights because you both have a straight. Ooh, yeah. That's nice. That's clean. I can't wait to use it. <laughs> so I'll tell you who my robot earlier. pick might have been. For uh, for podcast guest, this Luis Feria human seems uh, interesting to me. Ant Killer with a gets away with one there, bluffing the gut shot, and we've got Bernie getting to the river with just a pair of threes, which is the best hand. Is Luis gonna try to bluff Bernie? Might not be enough of a reason to. The pot is so small, you're going to think King High is a lot good there. A lot good? Pocket four is Bernie. Bernie. All of it. Probably 22 bigs. It's too much to shove fours, right? 22 big lines? Is it, Joe? Feels like it. Wow. Never mind. NM. Switching. So, I think the reason why I was so confident that would play as a shove, Joe, is because the rules 
can shift a little bit when the average stack is so big. When you're so much the last, you know, if, if, if you're in a tournament where a bunch of people all have 20 big blinds and there's 10 left and first place is 1.3 million, you know, you're not always just open shoving there for 22, 23 bigs, but because you're last in chips and because there's not a lot of playability, there's no, like, raise when someone three bets and you shove, you know, you don't really want to play it as a limp. I think that's why you're more comfortable shoving so many chips because... You have a lot of ground to make up. You need to someone to call you there with ace queen and win a flip, uh, but you don't want to be folding that hand, uh, playing it any other way. All right. Well, that makes sense. Another thing that's definitely some new knowledge putting in the. Uh, I mean, I'll forget it tomorrow, but you know, <laughs> uh, average. You gotta like look at the average. Okay, I have twenty big blinds, but the average stack is very, very high. So I need to. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's not as it's not as egregious. Whereas if the average is like thirty five big blinds. Makes sense. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Switch there. It changes, it changes the ICM of the situation, right? Because you have so, so much less to lose and, and uh, yeah. One double up isn't going to put you in third place, right? Whereas it might on right. a 30, 35 big blind average. Luis raising from the button. Ace Jack suited. King Jack, a domination situation for Dinge Brinker. Yeah, and we're going to see this raises yeah. Makes sense, I guess, against the chip leader in position. How will Luis respond? We saw Luis shove ace-10 in a similar situation for a similar stack depth. I think Luis might be inclined to call some, some of the time here because ace-jack suited in particular has oh so much boy. more playability than just ace-jack off. I think ace-jack off on your be shoving more often. Yeah. Top pair for Luis, top pair for Dinge Brinker. Yeah, and really an unfoldable spot for Dinge Brinker. Brinker. This is effectively a massive cooler. Um, you know, pocket nines and pocket sevens would have just gotten in preflop. So a lot of the time, you know, a lot of the time you're just going to be up against queen jack suited, jack ten suited, those kind of hands. Uh, you can't really be bet folding here. Your opponent could just have queen ten or King-10 suited here as well, which are both open-ended or double guts. So here we go. Brinker makes the call and is dominated. Does not catch the King on the turn or river. We are at nine, so play will end. However, there's still action at the other table. I don't and, imagine oh this hand's going to go on too much longer. It does not. The yeah, Nick pop. Poker... Is going to take down the last hand of the night at that table. So, my babies, the final table is set. Bernie squeaks in there in ninth place. Amadi, Anti Killer, Servlamin, KZHH, prudently. Third in chips is Yannick. Second is Yon. And chip leader headed in today, and chip leader heading out of today in the number one spot is Luis Faria. Griffin, that was some really good stuff at the end there. It's it's weird that for once you were misbehaving during James, but you were giving me the good stuff. <laughs> well, it was nice because we had so much action, you know. With with, with too much uh, lack of action, I can go off the rails. But that was great. That was I, really fun. I'm excited about tomorrow. There's a lot of – sorry, go ahead, Joe. No, I was going to say idle hands make the devils work. So yes, when you're bored, yes, that's absolutely. when we get in trouble. <laughs> But tomorrow there's a lot of narratives that I'm really interested to see play out. How is Anti-Killer going to bounce back from quite a big collapse from 45 million, I think the peak was, down to, I mean, we were seeing uh, about 11 million there as we saw the tail 13. end of that hand that had, I think, 13 million with like nine in the middle with the king four. I mean, was flailing a little bit. Uh, Yannick Poker, I think, has really impressed everyone that's been watching all day with some incredible uh, bluffing we have one of the greatest players of our generation in Amadi, um, you know, representing sort of the top, top, top tier of the pros. So a lot of uh, really exciting stuff happening in this tournament. Louis Faria playing near perfect uh, from what we've seen. So it's going to be a really exciting final table. Well, Griffin said it. We got lots and lots to look forward to tomorrow, including playing down from the final nine to the $1.3 million winner and world champion being awarded. Uh, we start tomorrow at the same time as we did today, same time as yesterday. That's 6 p.m. in the U.K., 7 p.m. in Central Europe, 10 a.m. here 
on the West Coast, 1 p.m. on the East Coast of North America. But until then, we're all out of time. For James Hardigan, Nicholas Walsh, Griffin Benger, and myself, Joe Stapleton, smell you later.